Kellogg's Pep, the super delicious cereal, present the adventures of Superman. Faster than a speeding bullet. More powerful than a locomotive. Able to leap tall buildings at a single bound. Look, up in the sky, it's a bird. It's a plane. It's Superman. Yes, it's Superman, whose fight to destroy the one power on Earth that can destroy him is now taking a new turn. We'll continue our story in a moment. But right now, let's join Dan McCullough and his pal Eddie as they share the comic section of today's newspaper. Gee whiz, it sure looks like Superman's in a tight spot. Yeah. And say, did you know that his picture is on one of those new comic buttons, huh? the new prizes and packages of Kellogg's Pet? Hey, uh, is that right? Sure. Superman and Smiling Jack and Moon Mullins, 18 different comic strip characters and all. Boy, oh boy, that's swell. Mom's getting a new package of pep tomorrow, and I'm sure going to look for one of those new comic buttons. I want them all. Sure you do, Eddie. You'll want to collect... Say, Dan, that gives me an idea for a new game. Yeah? Every kid has to act like he's the same character as on the button he's wearing. For instance, I'm wearing the Smoky Stover button, see? So I'm going on fire. And your sister could be Orphan Annie when she's wearing that button. Or Lillian. Yeah, wouldn't that be terrific? Yeah. I'd better get the whole gang busy collecting those new comic buttons. Then we can get going. And you won't have a bit of trouble, Eddie, because all the kids are mighty excited about these brand new comic buttons. They're getting set to collect the whole series, 18 different buttons in all, and all of them in full comic strip colors with true-to-life pictures of your favorite funny sheet characters. They're easy to get, too. You don't send in any money, not even a box stop. You just ask Mom to get you a package or two of that super delicious whole wheat flake cereal, Kellogg's Pet. Inside every package, there's a thrilling prize. One of these brand new colorful comic buttons or a military insignia or warplane button. Get your prize, gang, from P.E.P. Pet, made by Kellogg's of Battle Creek. And now, the adventures of Superman. In danger of his life, Superman is searching desperately for the Scarlet Widow, who almost destroyed him with a piece of kryptonite. The kryptonite is a fragment of the planet Krypton where Superman was born and robs him of his strength when he comes within ten feet of it. But unknown to Superman, part of the kryptonite was stolen from the widow by der Teufel, Germany's most brilliant scientist. Unable to dissolve the strange green glowing metal in order to form a powerful atomic substance, Teufel told a Nazi underground agent named Krauss that he must take the kryptonite to Germany, where he knew of a chemist who could dissolve it and create an atom man, a creature who could control Superman at will. Meanwhile, in the back room of a small book and gift shop in a fashionable district of Metropolis, the gaunt, ugly scarlet widow angrily hurls a stack of telegrams at the feet of Sniggers, her little henchman. Listen. My agent can't find Teufel in Detroit. They can't find him in Los Angeles. They can't find him in Cuba or Mexico or Canada. Where is he? He's a sly one, right, and that Teufel is. But if you listen to me with her, you'll forget about him. Forget about him? Are you crazy, Snickers? He got away with a quarter of the kryptonite. Worth a million dollars. I sure he did, and I'd like to slit his dirty throat for it. But we still got three pieces of the blooming stuff left. And that's why I think you're making a bad mistake with her. Suppose the vulture and them other two blokes finds out we dumped Superman in the ocean, and he's dead. They won't pay us nothing for the kryptonite, then. How can they find out? Only you and I know who was in that cedar chest. Yeah, they're smart, they are. They let them find Teufel. They know I won't sell them any part of the kryptonite until I see that double-crossing Nazi dead at my feet. Right now he's alive someplace, somewhere. Why don't the police find him? I don't know. The police is hunting for us, too. Don't forget that. And every day that blinking daily planet newspaper puts descriptions of us in their first page, telling anyone what sees us to call the bobbies. Don't worry, we're safe here. I don't like it. Not a bit, I don't. Look at with us. Let's sell what we've left of the blooming kryptonite and opit out here. No, I said. Not until I see Teufel dead. Now, get off that chair. I want uh, to use the typewriter. What are you going to do? I'm going to send a special delivery letter to every one of my agents all over the world. Telling them I'm raising my price to $200,000 for Teufel. Oh, that's a lot of folding money, that is. He's got to be found. He didn't evaporate into thin air. He's someplace, somewhere. And I'm going to find him and see him dead if it's the last thing I ever do. 
as the Scarlet Widow's long, bony fingers tap out an urgent command to her underworld agents to find the man who robbed and double-crossed her, Der Teufel himself, carefully disguised in a wig of thinning gray hair and a short, stubby beard, his fleshy face cleverly molded to new lines and contours, and wearing a black Hamburg hat and mink-lined overcoat, has just stepped from a clipper plane at Lisbon. Holding a bulky briefcase close to his side, he extends a passport to a customs officer who examines it perfunctorily as a large transport warms its powerful motors nearby. You are Dr. Alexander Orlovsky, senor? Yes. You travel from here to Madrid? I do. On my way to my own country, Belgravia, where I am finance minister. See? Si. Here is your visa, senor. Your plane leaves in ten minutes. Thank you. Hurrying to the transport plane, his briefcase clutched tightly under his arm, the Teufel is flown high over the Pyrenees and set down at bustling Le Bourget Airport of Paris. Once more, his bulky briefcase held tightly under his arm, he presents his passport to a customs inspector. We, oui, Monsieur Orlovsky, the newspaper reporter, they hear you arrived today and they ask for you. Uh, if you could perhaps not tell the reporters I'm arrived. My plane to Berlin leaves very soon, and I wish to rest before continuing my job. Oui, Monsieur Orlovsky, I will say nothing to them. Voilà, your visa, Monsieur. Bon voyage. Uh, donc, uh, merci, Monsieur. Uh, merci, merci. Still undetected in his disguise of Dr. Orlovsky, finance minister of Belgravia, the Teufel carrying a small piece of the deadly kryptonite, which he believes can be used to create an atomic creature able to forever control the strength and power of Superman, waits in Paris for a plane to carry him to Germany and his mysterious destination. Meanwhile, haggard from his unrelenting but futile search for the Scarlet Widow and the kryptonite, Superman in his guise of Clark Kent is in the teletype room at Metropolis Police Headquarters with Inspector Henderson. Here's the flight from Washington. No, no soap, Kent. The fellow they picked up at Papa Rose turned out to be a respectable high school teacher. A refugee. Well, if you'd only listen to me, Inspector, and concentrate on the search for the Scarlet Widow and Sniggers, I think you'd get further. They have the kryptonite. Oh, you and your kryptonite. I thought you had better sense, Kent. Why? Believing that a piece of fallen meteor can harm Superman. Well, it can do more than that, Inspector. Ultimately, it can destroy him. What? Look, I always had a lot of respect for you, Kent, but after a crack like that, you think well... I'm crazy, huh? Well, listen, I, I can tell... I for you, Inspector. Oh, uh, thank you, Miss Hardy. I'll be right along. I had the call transferred to the teletype room. You can take it on the phone right here. Okay. Uh, excuse me, Kent. Certainly. Inspector Henderson speaking. Oh, yes, Haley. What? What? Say that again. A fire with green flame? Green flame? What have you been drinking? Inspector, what did now, you say about... Now, just a minute, Kent, will you please? What would you just say, Haley? I didn't get it. A what? A murder? Well, why didn't you say so in the first place? Sure, I'll be right out. Where is it? Huh? Two, two, six. Yeah. Yeah, okay. All right, I'll see you right away. Well, how do you like that, Kent? Why? Haley gives me some cock and bull story about a fire in a basement. A fire that burns with green flames, he says, before he breaks down and tells me there's a murdered man in the basement. Come on, we'll have a look. A fire that burns with green flames, huh? It's very interesting, Inspector. Very interesting. I wonder if it could possibly be... Eagerly, Clark Kent hurries from police headquarters with Inspector Henderson. Who is the murdered man at the scene of the strange fire of green flames? We'll return in a moment for the exciting climax of today's episode. But first, here again is our announcer. Say, your eyes will pop, gang, when you get your first comic button from this brand new series in packages of Kellogg's Pep. These new buttons are really snappy. Bright, full-colored pictures of familiar comic strip characters like uh, Uncle Walt and Skeezix and Nina and Superman, of course. Each one printed in bright colors on a sturdy metal button you'll want to wear pinned on your jacket or dress or cap. Now, there are 18 different buttons in all, so get busy. Collect the whole series. Start out by asking Mom to get you a package or two of that super delicious whole wheat flake cereal, Kellogg's Pet. That's the only way you can get these new comic buttons, you know. You don't send in any money, not even a box top. You just look inside the pep package for your prize. One of these brand new exciting comic buttons or a military insignia or warplane button. There's a button in every package of P-E-P, pep, made by Kellogg's of Battle Creek. And now, back to the adventures of Superman. 
Clark Kent and Inspector Henderson have just arrived at the scene of a recent fire, the basement of a dingy tenement house. The basement, equipped as a cluttered, dirty little laboratory, has been half burned out, and the charred walls are a strange green. Leaving Officer Haley outside to keep back the curious crowd, Kent, Henderson, and a police surgeon are examining two men who lie on the basement floor. One, a short, foreign-looking old man, with thinning gray hair and a stubby beard, lies on his side, dead. The blade of a knife in his back. He is clad only in his underwear. The other man, tall and lean, sallow-faced, breathes faintly. This tall young fellow, how bad is he, Doc? Uh, beyond help, Inspector. Third-degree burns. He won't last more than a few minutes. Uh-huh. His driving license says Fred Krauss. This address. No other identification. There might be some prints on the knife. I wonder who the old fellow is and where his clothes are. He looks kind of familiar. I know who he is, Inspector. You do? Uh-huh. Who is he, Kent? Dr. Alexander Orlovsky, finance minister of Belgravia. Oh? He came to the United States a few weeks ago to try to float a government loan. Are you sure? Positive. I interviewed him. Uh, what's the finance minister of Belgravia doing here in this dump? And with a knife in his back. Uh, There's a nice kettle of fish. Yeah. Oh, what's the matter, Ken? What? I don't know. I suddenly felt weak and dizzy. What? Great Scott. Huh? Uh, what's the matter now? That test tube I just dropped. I was examining it. Inspector, there was kryptonite in that test tube a short time ago. Kryptonite? Yes. That accounts for the green flames. The Scarlet Widow must have been here. And maybe the Vulture, the Teufel, and that gang, too. They killed Dr. Olofsky for some reason. Something to do with me. With you? Huh? Oh, I... Uh, I, I mean with Superman. Oh. This man, Fred Krauss. He must know where they went and what they're up to. Doctor, you've got to bring him too. He's got to tell us. Well, what do you say, Doc? Any chance? Oh, I don't know, Inspector. He's in pretty bad shape. But I'll try. I'll need some hot water. Uh, well... Wait, there's a sink over there, Kent. Maybe... Uh... I'll see. Yes, it's hot. I'll get a fan. You've got to bring him to, Doctor. You've got to. He can tell us where the widow is and the kryptonite. He must well, be made to talk. Very low, Inspector. It's just a matter of minutes now. We've got to talk to him, Doctor. Can't you give him adrenaline or something? I've given him coralmine, Kent. If anything will bring him around, that will. I'm not too hopeful, though. He must come to. We've, we, we've got to get him to tell us who was here. Whoever it was murdered Dr. Orlovsky. Well, not more than murder took place here, Inspector. Something to do with a kryptonite. Oh, forget that nonsense, Kent. Nonsense? I tell you that unless that kryptonite is found, and soon it may mean the end of Superman. What's that? Don't pay any attention to him, Doc. Somebody fed him a lot of hot air about Superman being in danger, and he fell for it. Now, Doc, you've got to bring Klaus around. Well, I'm doing all I can, Inspector. Oh, but wait a minute. Uh, he just groaned. Yes. I think he's coming through. Good. Uh, Teufel. What did he say? Teufel. Uh, Teufel. Orlovsky. You hear that, Kent? He knows about Dr. Orlovsky. Yes, and apparently uh, Teufel was here. Now, what about Orlovsky, Kraus? Who killed him? Teufel. Teufel killed him? Control. Wait a second. Superman. Kraus is strengthening, Inspector. It's just possible to have a rational moment, moment. I suggest that you decide on the most important question you want to ask him. Ask him where the kryptonite is, Inspector. Uh, Are you out of your mind, Kent? I want to know who killed Orlovsky. But if you find out who... Uh, Teufel... Where are you? He's rational now. Quick, question him. Krauss, where is the kryptonite? Shut up, Kent. Teufel has it. Where is Teufel? I said shut up, Kent. Now, Krauss. Krauss, listen to me. Who killed Dr. Orlovsky? Teufel. I thought so. Where is he, Krauss? Where did he go? He went. He went. Where yeah. did he go? All right, where? Where, Krauss? He, he went to... Atom man. Atom man. I'm afraid he's thinking, Inspector. Listen, Klaus. Where? Where? Atom man. Destroy. Klaus. Listen, Klaus. It's no use, Inspector. He's dead. <sighs> well, that's that, Kent. Now I'm in a fine spot. I've got to tell the Belgravian government and the newspapers that Teufel, who broke out of prison, somehow nice Dr. Orlovsky and escaped again. Now, isn't that going to make me look good? We've got to find Teufel, Inspector. No kidding. 
Well, what do you think we've been trying to do ever since he broke out of the pen? But now it's even more important that we find him. He's got the kryptonite. No, that again. And apparently he worked out some experiment in this laboratory with it. Something he told Krauss will enable Germany to control me, uh, to control Superman and rule the world. Something to do with an atom man. Have you gone nuts, Ken? No. First, we, you get all steamed up about that piece of meteor endangering Superman. Well, it does. And I now can... you take a dying man's babbling seriously. Look, Ken. Look, I used to think you were a good reporter, but can't I... Inspector. Well, what is it, Doc? There's nothing more I can do here. The wagon's on the way, so I'll be running along. Okay, Doc. And thanks a lot. So long. Goodbye, Ken. Goodbye, Doctor. Oh, you've got to listen to me, Inspector. Look, I haven't got time to listen uh, to the fairy tales. But it's not a... Uh-oh. Here comes the frock coat and silk hat. He must be from the Belgravian Embassy. Uh, Inspector Henderson. Yes, yes, I'm Henderson. I am Count Rudovich. I received a telephone call. Yes, I know. I'm afraid I've got some bad news for you, Count. The police officer said it had something to do with Dr. Arlovsky, our finance minister. But that I cannot understand because... Uh, just step over here, will you please? Oh, by the way, this is Clark Kent, reporter for the Daily Planet. Count Bilovich, the Belgravian ambassador. How do you do, Mr. Kent? All right, here we are. Prepare yourself for a shot, Count. He's under this canvas. Who is it? I want you to identify him. Look. Good heavens. Dr. Orlovsky. You were right, Kent. But this, this cannot be, Inspector. It cannot be Dr. Orlovsky. What do you mean? You just said it was. Yes, yes, it is, but... But how can he be here in Metropolis? Come again, please. What do you mean, Count Zilovich? Wait, wait, three days ago, Dr. Orlovsky left Metropolis by clipper plane to return to Belgravia. He what? did? What, sir? Yes, yes, his mission here was completed. He returned to our country to report to Parliament. I myself sent farewell to him and found the depart for the airport. Looks like he didn't get to the airport. He was waylaid by Teufel for some reason and brought here. Now, why I would he... I think I know, Inspector. Orlovsky, I cannot understand. How did he get here? Who did it uh, to uh, him? Just, just a minute, Count. What did you start to say, Kent? I said I think I know what happened. Dr. Orlovsky is about the same size as Teufel. What's that got to do with it? I think Teufel, who was probably working with Krauss here, found out about Dr. Orlovsky leaving the country. They trapped him here, killed him, then Teufel dressed in his clothes. Hey, Orlovsky's clothes are missing. Go ahead, Kent. Teufel made himself up to look enough like Orlovsky to pass muster with the customs inspectors, took Orlovsky's passport and the kryptonite, and got on the clipper plane as Dr. Orlovsky. Why, George, that might be it, Kent. I'm sure it is. But who is Teufel? Why did he do this to poor Lofsky? Teufel is a Nazi scientist, one of the cleverest Hitler had. A year ago, he almost succeeded in solving the secret of harnessing atomic energy. Now, with the kryptonite, he... My God! Kraus talked of an atom man! Oh, no, no, it, it can't be! It's too fantastic! What are I you I do not understand. About? We've got to stop Teufel. Come on, Inspector. Well, if you're right, Kent, and Teufel is traveling disguised as Dr. Orlovsky... I'm sure he is. All right, then, we'll get him. We'll contact the Pippa Force on the European police. Uh, there's my car. Come on, Gombrilovich. We'll drop you at the embassy. Thank you, Inspector. Cassidy, don't let anybody in here. Hurrying from the shabby basement laboratory, Clark Kent and Inspector Henderson leap into Henderson's car to take up the trail of the trifle. We'll return in a moment for the exciting climax of today's episode. But first, here again is our good friend. You know, gang, there's sure a mad rush for the Kellogg's Pep Package these days. Because that's the only place you can get those brand new comic buttons all the gang's collecting. And are these new buttons swell? Full-color, true-to-life pictures of your old favorite comic strip characters. Looking so real, you'd think they were going to speak. There's uh, Orphan Annie and Harold Keen and Winnie Winkle, Superman, of course. Eighteen different buttons in all. You'll have a mighty smart collection when you have these new buttons pinned on your jacket or cap. You'll have a lot of fun collecting these comic buttons, too swapping duplicates with your pals, and why it even seems to make it more fun to follow the funny papers when you've got buttons with the real characters on them. And the best part is, you don't have to spend any of your allowance for these new comic buttons. You don't even send in a box stop. Can't buy them anywhere. They come only as prizes in packages of that super delicious whole wheat flake cereal, Kellogg's Pep. So ask Mom to get you a supply of Pep tomorrow. Inside, you'll find your exciting prize. One of these brand new comic buttons or a military insignia or warplane button. There's a prize in every package of P.E.P. Pet made by Kellogg's of Battle Tree. And now back to the adventures of Superman. Inspector Henderson, by a short wave, is attempting to intercept the Teufel, whom he and Kent believe escaped from Metropolis by clipper plane disguised as Dr. Alexander Orlovsky, the finance minister of Belgravia. 
Now, at a powerful shortwave receiver in the radio room at headquarters, Henderson and Kent stand by anxiously as the International Police Channel becomes alive with confirming messages. R, RC 506, Lisbon, Portugal, to WMPD, Metropolis Police. It's Lisbon. Quiet, will you? Orlovsky arrived Tuesday 12th. Proceeded via Iberian transport plane to Madrid. I will repeat. Orlovsky arrived Tuesday 12th. Proceeded via Iberian transport plane to Madrid. Official Vendeur to WMPD Metropolis Police. Per your request, Orlovsky arrived at Bourget Field Wednesday, 11.30 p.m. The thief departed Thursday, 2.40 a.m. via French Empire Airways. Destination Berlin. Repeating message, per your request, Orlovsky arrived at Bourget Field Wednesday, 11.30 p.m. United States Army Occupational Police, Division 22, WMPD, Metropolis Police Department. Alexander Orlovsky arrived Berlin via French Empire Airways Thursday, the 14th, 11.50 a.m. Arranged reservation on Baltic Transport Line for Belgravia, leaving Berlin 2.40 p.m., but did not appear again at airport. Full investigation underway. So far, no report. We'll keep you advised. United States Occupational Police signing off with WMPD, Metropolis Police Department. Come here. Yeah? What is? You do not know me. I do not know time such as you. I wish to close up now. For the meal, you owe me five marks. Look closely at me. Got fight. How do you know my name? Who are you? You do not recognize my voice. Well, I've been away a long time. Wait. I will remove the wig. So? And the patch from my eyes. So? Now, you regard me? The Teufel. Not so bad. Who else is here? At the moment, only myself and my wife, Gertha. But the Allied soldiers are all about in the forest and on the road. I they saw be- them. Tell me, Professor Milk is in the hiding place. Milk? Yeah, Milk, the chemist, my colleague. The Allied soldiers have not captured him. Nine, not yet. Go. I must see him at once. What the... Come, take me to the passageway. It's in the tower, is it not? Well, why do you stand there? Take me to the passageway, I said. Nine, Purple. You cannot go to the hiding place in the forest. You are a great danger to us. A danger? I, a danger? You blockhead. I come on a great mission to restore the fatherland. Tremendous difficulties I had in escaping from the United States and then from the Americans in Berlin. Oh, that we know. And we know, too, that the American police traced you to Berlin and now their police in Germany may find you. Ah. Already, just before evening, they were here at my inn to inquire if any had seen you. So far, they do not suspect that I work in the underground Nazi movement. What? God, please. Listen to me. Someone is coming. Send him away, whoever it is. I cannot. It may be the American police. Quick, quick, put that to be on your head and the patch on your eye. Godfrey. It is the American sergeant. Oh, God, this was for him. Now we are on top. Why did you not leave? I beg you. I have to do it, I tell you. I am your cousin from Nuremberg. Hold this milk, and you understand. It will not work. I must control you. So far, all is lost. Oh, there you are, Guthrie. Why didn't you answer? Who is this man? Ah, good morning, Sergeant. I I did not hear you come in. I was so busy talking. I was calling all times with my cousin. Uh, cousin, huh? I haven't seen him around before. Oh, uh, no, no. You see, uh, it's only just the right uh, sergeant to visit with my cousin, Godfrey. Uh, what's your name? Friedrich Melcher, my hair. Where are you from? From Nuremberg. Let me see your papers. But, uh, sir, yeah. Certainly, my hair. Here they are. Ah. Uh, they seem to be in order. Oh, thanks, my hair. 
the American party thought perhaps I was a Nazi, Godfrey. Oh, no, I... Ah, you Germans are all alike. Now you've lost the war, all of you say you hated Hitler, and none of you were Nazis. Well, I was just shaking up. Good night. A glass of beer before you go, huh, Sergeant? Or wine, perhaps? Oh, fine. Good night, man, Herr. Good night, dear Sergeant. I'll be the same. Lock the door, turn off the light. Sorry, I help you. Oh, him is never was I so scared. Where did you get the paper? What does that matter? Sorry, now lock the door. Yeah, I will lock it. After you leave. Again, that. Listen to me, Godfrey. I tell you, I must be Professor Milk. With his aid, I can not only control the American what? Superman who blocked our plans before, oh, but... What is that you say? You can control Superman. Ah, now you become interested. But then wait with what is in the next step on my back, we will be able to control the world. Let alone Superman. What is in your next I will show you, but first, lock the door. I will lower the shade on the window. Oh, All right. Now, the American soldiers will think I have gone to bed. Show me what is in the next potion. Yeah, one moment. Ah, here it is. The box. Is that all? Is that all? He said. This box that fight is the power to completely destroy our enemy. Look. What, what strange thing is this? It's like a large piece of stone. Only a piece of a green light. And what is that your sound it makes? That it should see that fight is kryptonite. Kryptonite? So what is that? It is a fragment of the former planet Krypton on which Superman was born. Then he comes to the intense heat of his passion. He becomes weak and even loses consciousness. What nonsense is this? This is the truth I have seen for myself. And no, I have seen. No! Do not touch it. It will burn your hands. It will burn? Yeah. It is highly radioactive. I have discovered by experiment that it is more complex in atomic structure and so more radioactive than any other element known in the world. More so even than thorium, radium, actinium. More even than uranium. Uranium? Uh, that is what the Americans used to make a terrible atomic bomb. Yeah. But besides this kryptonite, uranium is as nothing. The kryptonite has no impurities, and its radioactive discharge, as I have myself measured with an electroscope, is a hundred times greater in intensity than uranium. Do you realize what that means, Capri? You become too scientific for me, Toyfi. Just tell me how you plan to use this material to control Superman and destroy our enemies. Ah, now you come to the heart of the matter, Capri. It's Professor Mist, whose great genius I require to dissolve this substance. I will create an atom man. An atom man? Yeah, an atom man. A creature more deadly than a dozen atomic bombs. A monster from whose fingertips will come to power. The atomic energy which will make the great Superman his servant, his slave. And which will destroy our enemies. Incredible. This, this atom man, how do you... What is that? Sirens. The Americans, please. They approach from the town. They, they must have traced you here. They must not find me quickly. Take me to the secret passage. Yeah, yeah. yeah. If what you just told me is true, it's then... true. Oh, it's milk's help. I can do what I say in a few days, perhaps even less. Quickly now, take me to the passageway. Come this way to the cellar. All right. The police will be here in a moment. There's a tunnel under the floor. I will show you. It will take you under the edge of the forest where the Americans stand guard to the hidden cave. Hurriedly, the Nazi innkeeper leads the Teufel down to the cellar, to the secret passageway into the Black Forest. We'll return in a moment for the tenth climax of today's episode. But first, let's stand by for a word from our announcer. Say, gang, you kind of like Superman, don't you? Why, sure. Most of you follow his adventures in the funny papers and listen to him on the radio every day. Well, Superman is just one of the characters on those 18 different comic buttons that now come in packages of Kellogg's Pep. Yes, in every package, there's a swell prize. Maybe a button with Superman on it, or uh, or Winnie Winkle, or her brother Perry. The pictures are in full comic strip colors on sturdy metal with a handy pin on the back so that you can wear your whole collection of buttons on your jacket or dress or cap. You'll want to collect all 18 of these brand new comic buttons. 
soap is a good idea to hold tight to any duplicate. Then, trade with your pals for some button you don't have yet and help round out your collection. And here's how easy it is to get these exciting new comic buttons. You don't send in a single penny, not even a box top. You just ask Mom to get you several packages of that super delicious whole wheat flake cereal, Kellogg's Pet. Then, look inside the package and see which prize you find. One of these colorful new comic buttons or a military insignia or warplane button. Remember now, you can't buy these buttons anywhere. They come only as prizes in packages of Kellogg's Pet. Get your collection complete. Ask Mom for P-E-P, Pet, made by Kellogg's of Battle Creek. And now, back to the adventures of Superman. As the Teufel hurried to the secret passageway in the inn near the Black Forest, Superman has streaked to Berlin from Metropolis. And now, in his guise of Clark Kent, we find him in the office of Colonel Greeley, Chief of Intelligence at American Occupation Force Headquarters. I tell you, we've searched everywhere, Kent. Everywhere, but we can't find a trace of Teufel. Honey, must be found, Colonel Greeley. I'm well aware of that. He murdered Dr. Orlowski, the Belgradian finance minister. That's right. That makes an embarrassing situation for our people. Well, it's even more important than that. Teufel has the kryptonite, and I... Uh, Superman is helpless against it. Well, I'm not worried about anything like that. I want Teufel for murder. Where was he last seen? At the Berlin Airport. The night before last, he landed from a French plane disguised as Dr. Orlowski, made a reservation on a plane leaving for Belgravia at midnight, and then, well, he just disappeared. Somebody must have seen him. Apparently nobody saw him after he left the reservation off. He's nobody's fool, you know. We've got to find him. We've got to. Oh, excuse me. That's my phone. Uh, Colonel Gravely speaking. Who? Oh, yes, Captain Meister. What? You have? Where? Who? I see. Yes, yes, of course, I'll be right over. Of course, at once. Thanks, Lord. Come on, Kent. That was... Captain Meisty of the Russian Occupational Police. He just got a hot clue to poison. He did? What is it? He didn't say he just told me to rush right over. I presume you want to come along. Do I? Try and stop me. We can go through the record offices to the back of the building. My car is waiting. We can be at Russian headquarters. This is the man, gentlemen. He was picked up in the Russian zone of Berlin an hour ago. He had just sold a magnificent mink-lined overcoat to a pawnbroker. I do nothing wrong. It is my own overcoat. I Silence, think... you. But, Captain, this man is not the Teufel. I did not say he was, Colonel Greeley. He had, however, contact with the Teufel. Where? When? A night before the last, Comrade Kent, in a street close to the airport. These are Teufel's clothes he wears now, or rather, the clothes of the late Dr. Orlovsky of Belgravia, as whom Teufel masqueraded. They are? Are you sure? I am positive, Colonel. In a pocket of the overcoat was a label bearing the name of Dr. Orlovsky and the name of a tailor in Belgravia. The same tailor's label is in the frock coat this man wears. He gave them to me. I do not know his name. He approached me near the airport, a man much of my own size and wearing very thick eyeglasses. Yes. He carried a fine leather dispatch case. That description fits Teufel, Kent. Yes, yes, go on. He asked if I would exchange clothes with him. At first I thought he made a joke. But he gave me no time to consider. Almost before I knew what occurred, I wore his clothes and he was gone with mine. Gone where? Where did he go? I know not, mein Herren. It was dark at night and he moved very swiftly. I saw him go towards the Kaiserstraße and then I saw him no more. Nor has anyone else. I think you attacked him, robbed him and did away with his body. Nein, nein, I swear. Then where are your papers, your identification? I have told you. They were in the pocket of my jacket. But so quick was all this, I did not remember them until the man was gone. Uh-oh, now we're getting someplace. What's your name? Friedrich Melker, mine here. I am from Nuremberg. Friedrich Melker from Nuremberg, eh? Colonel Greeley, Teufel is about this fellow's size, and he has his clothes and papers. That means... Teufel is now disguised as Melker. Right, Kent. We'll get after him at once. May I use your phone, Captain Meissy? Of course, Colonel. But it is my opinion that this man lies as do most Germans. I think either he killed Teufel... Nein, I did or else... not. He's in league with him. Well, if he'd killed him, he'd still have his papers. And if he was in league with him, he wouldn't be so stupid as to walk around in Teufel's discarded clothes. No, I think he's telling the truth. Teufel evidently knew we were aware he was disguised as Dr. Orlovsky, and he needed a new disguise in a hurry to get wherever he's going with the kryptonite. Well, we've got a chance to intercept him now, but we've got to work fast. Right. I'll call American headquarters and send out an alarm. Good. You may be right, Comrade Kent. I'm sure I am. Oh, I will, of course, do all I can to help, too. I, too, will transmit a radio alarm to my men. Soviet KPU, Berlin, calling all military.
military and police forces. Attention. Search for middle-aged men about 5 feet 7, weight 190 pounds, ragged clothing, carrying identification papers of Frederick Berger of Nuremberg. This man is a Attention, Berlin office calling all military and occupation police. It is believed that man wanted as the Teufel is now disguised in ragged clothing and carries papers identifying him as Friedrich Meltzer of Nuremberg. As urgent radio calls crackle over the German airwaves to speed a new search for the Teufel, the elusive Nazi scientist has made his way through an underground tunnel from a small inn to a deep rock cave in the Black Forest. The main entrance of the cave is cleverly concealed by fallen trees and heavy underbrush. Within, it is large and musty, fitfully illuminated by two coal oil lamps and fitted with rough bunks on which lounge a dozen assorted Nazis. Men, young and old, all former leaders in the Nazi regime of savage persecution and conquest. Now hiding from and plotting against their conquerors. Some are men of science. Two are field marshals. Three are members of the ruthless Gestapo. In the half room, their eyes gleam like fierce hunted animals as they regard the strangely humming, green glowing kryptonite which the Teufel has set in its open box before Professor Ernst Milk, the stooped, shaggy haired chemist who did more than any one man to keep Hitler's oil starved Panzer Division operating on her top fuel. There are kids, Milk. Almost insurmountable difficulties I had in obtaining it and bringing it here. This is the kryptonite Teufel? Yeah. It is a part of the fragment from the shattered planet Krypton on which Superman was born. Yeah. In the presence of this material, Superman becomes helpless as a baby. Oh, Superman, here it is. What nonsense is this? It is the truth, General Bomburg. I myself have seen Superman lose consciousness when he approached this metal. Was it? I do not believe it. You may be given an opportunity to see for yourself. There is no element like this in all the world, Milch. The gamma rays it admits, as indicated by the cold green light and hum, are too strong even for him. Oh. It is a hundred times more complex and radioactive than thorium or radium or even uranium. You tested this with the electroscope? Yeah, and I used shields to talk. The gamma rays penetrated the shields with such an intensity as to be unbelievable and ionized the air and gases as uranium could never oh. do. And it has no impurity. Think what that means, Miller. Yeah. A tiny quantity of it will serve our purpose, whereas the Americans must have a great deal of uranium to purify only enough for a single atomic bomb. What does this madman speak of bombs? Tell him, Miller, how our great factories are destroyed or in the hands of the Allies. Tell him how we, the last few loyal followers of the pure, live here in a cave under the ground, hunted like rats, and forced to subsist on a few lean rabbits and birds we can snare in the park. Do you think I'm a fool? Have I not eyes in my head? However, with the kryptonite, we need neither pack race nor bombs. What? Huh? What do you mean, Paul? I will explain, but first I will close the box. Oh, but now come. Tell us what it is you mean. I mean this, Mir. If you can dissolve the kryptonite, I will create an atom man. If what? Any, what? An atom man. A creature in whose veins will flow a solution of pure kryptonite who will, by use of a converter, be able to shoot kryptonite atoms from his fingertips in an unbroken chain that will create such destruction as the world has never dreamed of. You're mad! I was never so sane in my life, General Bromberg. If Professor Mills can dissolve the kryptonite, we will be able to control Superman and then force the rest of the world to its knees. But, Poison, you speak of an upper man. I presume you mean an artificial man, a robot. Nine Mills. I mean a human being. What? Yeah. A human being. One of us here, in this case, will be the world's first atom man. Startled, Professor Milk and his Nazi cohorts stare open-mouthed at the Teufel. A human atom man. Can Teufel be serious? We'll return in a moment for the climax of today's episode. But first, here again is our good friend. You know, Eddie's mother asked me the other day, what on earth has gotten into him lately? Says she hears him carrying on the strangest conversations with his pals, like, uh, trade you a Superman for Harold Keen, or, uh, have you got Smokey Stover yet? Well, of course, I told her he's busy with his collection of the new comic buttons 
that now come in packages of Kellogg's Pep. Told her there are 18 different buttons, each one with a true-to-life picture of a familiar comic strip character, like Smiling Jack and Moon Mullins and K.O. and Superman, of course. Told her these buttons are bright-colored and sparkling on sturdy metal. Told her all the gang likes to collect them, trade them, wear them on their jackets or dresses or caps. And you know what Eddie's mother said? That's fine, she said. I'm going to get Eddie another package of Kellogg's Pep right away. And you know, that's the only way you can get these colorful new comic buttons. In packages of Pep. You can't buy them anywhere. You don't send in any money, not even a box stop. You just ask Mom to get you a package or two of that super delicious whole wheat flake cereal, Kellogg's Pep. Inside every package, there's a thrilling prize. One of these dazzling new comic buttons. Or a military insignia or warplane button. It's a prize for you from P.E.P. Pet, made by Kellogg's of Battle Creek. Now, back to the adventures of Superman. In a hidden cave in the Black Forest of Germany, where Professor Milk, the famous chemist, and several other prominent Nazis are hiding, Sir Teufel has just startled them by stating that one of them would become the world's first atom man. You're Sir Teufel, Matt. Out of such madness, General, will come victory. But how can this be, Teufel? With a kryptonite in his veins, a man he could not live. In my solution, he would live, Milk. But if the atoms were split, he'd blow up, you fool. Whom do you call a fool, General? I did not lose the war. You did. Well, me. speak. We have everything to gain and nothing to lose. How long before you can dissolve this kryptonite? But I, I do not know. I have a small laboratory set up in another room of the cave, but it does not very complete. You performed great things during the war when you did not have everything you needed. Will you try now for your own life? And the life of the Fatherland? I tell you, he is mad, Miss. No, I intend on the poison. It's not mad. He is a genius. But if he says he can create an upper man, then I believe him. Somehow, whatever the cost, I will dissolve the crypton. Well spoken, Miss. A toast to our success, gentlemen. Is there wine? I... Oh, yeah. Ah, good. Hail Hitler! Hail Hitler! For heaven's sake, sit down, Kent. You're getting on my nerves. Oh, I'm sorry, Colonel. I guess my own nerves are getting a bit ragged. It's just that Teufel has that kryptonite, and he's a, he's a brilliant scientist, and, well, he's performed some experiments, something to do with an atom man, which he says will rule the world. And you believe that? Well... Say your nerves are in bad shape. Well, it's just that I know Teufel, you don't. And I know the power of that kryptonite. I tell you, Teufel must be found, and found quickly. He, he must. But I need help. Even I can't examine every nook and cranny of Germany and all of the hundred million people in it. Fearful as he has never been before, Clark Kent, who is Superman, waits for some word of the Teufel. Meanwhile, at a little village near the Black Forest, a young military police sergeant named Bill Nelson has just alighted from a train after a 48-hour leave. In a jeep with Corporal Harry Marks, he is returning over the dark road to his base. Hey, what's that new gadget on the dash, Harry? Looks like a radio. It is. We're in style now, Bill. Regular big-time cops. They put a two-way set in here day before yesterday, the day you went on leave. That's yeah, pretty snazzy. <laughs> Turn it on, see if you can get Bing Crosby. Are you kidding? Let's see what headquarters has to say. Number three, South Central Occupation Zone. All military commanders and occupation police stand by for important announcements. Oh, what's this? It is believed that a dangerous German scientist named Der Teufel is now disguised in ragged clothing. Oh, that again. Carrying papers identifying him as Friedrich Melker what? of Nuremberg. This man must be apprehended. Friedrich Melker? He is about 5 feet 7, weighs 190 pounds, wears thick eyeglasses. He is believed to have in his possession a smalling radioactive metal. Take no chances with this man. He is dangerous. That is all. We've been getting that announcement every couple hours since you left. They must want that Teufel guy bad. I wonder what that piece of metal is he's carrying around. Friedrich Melker. You know, I've heard that name before. You have? Where? I can't remember. But I know I heard it someplace. Say, seems to me there's somebody in the movies or on the radio named Melker. Oh, I got it. An opera singer. Melky Orr. <laughs> that's why it sounds familiar. Oh, yeah. Maybe that's it. Sure. I'll spruce up, Bill. There are the lights of the inn. We'll be at the base soon. You want to look sharp when you meet up with the CO again? We got a lecture this morning about getting sloppy on occupation duty. Oh, I saved on the trip. Harry, 
stop at the end. What for? What's at the end? I just remembered. That's where I saw Frederick Melker. What? Now, wait a minute. I saw him, I tell you, two nights ago, just before I went on leave. Go on, pull up in front. You saw him where? In the dining room. He was with Godfrey, the innkeeper. Godfrey said he was his cousin. Godfrey did? Listen, are you sure? Sure as I'm sitting here. I was making my last check before going back to the base. And this short, powerful German was with Godfrey. He was wearing ragged clothes and a patch over one eye. I asked him who he was. He said he was Frederick Milker from Nuremberg. I asked him for his papers. Did he have them? Yeah, they were in order, all right. So I left. Holy smoke, Harry, that guy was toyful. Then what are we waiting for? Come on. Haven't closed up yet. No, you better check your gun. Yeah. It's okay. Let's go. I didn't see anybody around when I was here yesterday or today. Well, he could be hiding in one of the rooms. In the cellar. If he isn't, Godfrey will know where he is. I never did like that rosy cheek, Kraus. Always fawning. Well, here we are. You're in charge, Sergeant. Proceed. The place looks empty. Here comes mine host. Ah, guten Abend, meine Herren. To what do I... We came to see your, um, cousin. My, uh... Uh, a cousin? Yes, yes, you remember. He was here two nights ago. His name's Frederick Melker. Nobody um, in the dining room, Bill. Oh, oh, my cousin Frederick. Yeah, yeah, of course. I'd forgotten he was here. He stayed so short a time. You mean he's not here now? Oh, nine, nine. He left soon after you did, Sergeant. But, um, why do you wish to see Frederick? Are you kidding? You know, doggone well, that's Just a minute, honey. Where did he go, Gottfried? He said he was returning to Nuremberg. That is his home. I see. Mind if we look around a bit? No, look around? Of course not. What, uh... Yeah, we'll well, take a look at the kitchen first. Come on. No, no, you lead the way, Godfrey. Uh, yeah, yeah, of course, of course. But I do not understand. I tell you, boy, you're not... What? He told behind the bar. Huh? Dirty bum. Come back here, Godfrey, or I'll drag you out of there. Oh. Hurry. Hurry. Godfrey. My leg. Look out, Bill. Yeah, I see him. He ducked too quick. Harry, all right? Just my leg. Oh, never mind me, Bill. Watch when he shows himself again. You better come out from behind that bar, Godfrey. I'll come out when you are both dead. Listen, you fool, you can't get away. You better come out while you're still alive. I oh, yeah? I show you. He shot the light out. Watch it, Bill. Stay down, honey. We, we can't see the bar. He can't see us either. Yes, he can. There's a little moonlight coming in from the window behind us. Oh, you think that's so, Bill, eh? <laughs> Yes, and we'll get him, and you too, Godfrey. Nine, it is I. I will get you, you American shrine. <laughs> it's like I, I'm going after him. Oh, Bill, you can't see him. Don't worry. Just hug the floor, fella. What, Bill? Quiet. Yeah, I'm going after him. I got you. No, geek American. Bill, oh, Bill, I'm shot. Bill, uh, Bill. I'm okay, Harry. I think he's done for, though. How about you? You sound hurt. Uh, I... He nicked me in the side. You stay here. Where are you going? I'm going to the car. Radio. Call the base. Bell. Bell. It's okay. I, I, I can make it. I hope. I've got to the car. Call the base. Get hurt. Tell him. I hurt. I, I don't know about it. can make it. Major Carroll, will you come here, sir? Uh, yes, Corporal, what is it? We've been getting a signal from Sergeant Nelson, sir. I think he's in trouble. Well, what kind of trouble? I don't know. I can't quite make him out. Something about... Listen. Nelson. Calling. Base. Nelson. There he is again. Calling. You hear him, sir? Yes, answer him. Base. Well, I, ha- I have, but he-, he doesn't seem to hear him. Well, try again. South Central Zone 3 to Sergeant Nelson. We hear you. What's the trouble? Come in. What's the matter with him? He doesn't answer. No, he doesn't. Need help. Wounded. Says he needs help. He's wounded. Ask him where he is. Yes, sir. Where are you, Bill? Where are you? I... I... Trace. What was that? Something about Trace. He said that before. Toy... Toy... Toyful. Toyful? Great Caesar, he's trying to tell us he's traced to Teufels. Tell him we heard him and ask him where he is. Yes, sir. We heard you, Bill. You traced Teufel and you're wounded. Tell us where you are. <laughs> in. In? Where? Got. Got free. Oh. 
He said the night freeze. He must mean Gottfried's in. I'll go there at once. Now, stand by, Corporal. I may have an important message for you to flash to Berlin. Lieutenant Harris, Lieutenant Harris! As Major Carroll and a detachment of soldiers start for Gottfried's Inn, Superman, unaware of this latest development, has made an important decision. After one more fruitless effort to find Der Teufel, the man of steel, in his guise of reporter Clark Kent, has just entered the office of Colonel Greeley, Chief of American Intelligence. I've come to say goodbye, Colonel. Goodbye? Where are you going, Kent? Back to America. But you're here on the Teufel story. You're not going home before we find him. I must. If he hasn't been found by now, he won't be. Nonsense, Kent. It may take time, but we'll get him eventually. Eventually is too late, Colonel. One week more, even one day more may be too late. Too late for what? To save Superman. And perhaps far more than Superman. Save Superman? Oh, you're harping on that kryptonite nonsense again. Yes, believe me, Colonel, it isn't nonsense. Kryptonite is Superman's one mortal enemy. Oh, come now, Kent. Believe me, it is. And now Der Teufel has it. He's one of the most brilliant scientists Germany ever developed. And he knows the power of that kryptonite. He's trying to develop some sort of an atom man with it to rule the world. An atom man? Huh? Yes. Look, Kent, you're too smart a reporter to believe anything as fantastic as that. Well, they said the atomic bomb was fantastic, too, Colonel, before the first one fell on Hiroshima. Yes, but an atom man? That's too incredible. I hope so. But I'm not at all sure. That's why I can't waste another minute. I've got to get back to Metropolis where Dr. Mi where, where a friend of mine is trying to perfect a defense against the kryptonite. A defense for Superman? That's right. So I'll be saying goodbye, Colonel, and thanks for everything. Well, there's nothing to thank me for, Kent. I've enjoyed having you around. But have a nice trip home and say hello to the Statue of Liberty for me. I will. So long, Colonel. Goodbye. Well, let's see. Plenty of deserted offices at this late hour. Yeah, this will do. I'll just close the door. And out of these clothes. Ah, Colonel really thinks that nothing for a Superman to worry about, eh? Well, I know there is. Dr. Millicent must find some defense against the kryptonite. That's my only chance to survive. There we are. All set. Up to this window. And back to Metropolis. Up! Up! And away! Leaping high into the starry night sky, Superman streaks away to the west, across the continent of Europe, and out over the broad Atlantic toward Metropolis. Meanwhile, in a musty, dimly lit cave deep in the black forest of Germany, the dread menace which Superman fears is being prepared against him. On a rough bunk rise a tall, slim, blonde-haired young German. His eyes are closed and he breathes heavily, laboriously, his chest straining to its utmost as the breath rasps from his lips. A long rubber tube extends from a taped clasp on his forearm to a glass vial suspended above the bunk, in which the last drops of a thick, brilliantly green liquid are disappearing into the tube. Leaning over one side of the bunk, his eyes popping behind thick lens spectacles, is Der Teufel, his fingers on the sleeping German's pulse. On the other side, his face white and tense, stands the shaggy-haired chemist, Professor Milch. How oh, is his pulse poison? Very much. But in a few moments, when the kryptonite solution is taken into his blood, it will recede to normal. You say it will, but how do you know such an experiment as this has never been attempted before? I am confident we will succeed. You are confident. Uh, it is not your son who lies there, it is mine. You offered him uh, for this great service to the Vaterland, and he pleaded for the honor. Do you now regret it? Nein, nein, of course not. It is just that now I'm afraid for him. You should not be afraid. Rather be proud. For I give your son the opportunity of visiting such terror and destruction upon his hated enemies as is almost beyond imagination. But first, the great Superman will bow to him and do his will. Yeah, yeah, that is good, Teufel, good. But why does he not regain consciousness? The solution is all gone now for the vial. In a moment. The kryptonite is a great shock to his system. Remove the transfusion, too. Yeah. I will attach the converter so that when he awakes, he will be ready. Yeah. Uh, that small square box you attach to his throat, that is the converter? Yeah. It fits above the jugular vein. Now, this little switch here. When it is thrown, an impulse flashes to the kryptonite in his blood, rearranging the outer structures of the atoms. They rush toward his hands, on which he will wear the meshed platinum and thorium gloves I showed you. At that point, the nucleus of the atom is broken and there will emerge from his finger such a stream of energy that anything in its path, be it men or great buildings or even mountains, will disappear.
appear as if they had never been there. Oh, yeah, yeah, the period I understand, Teufel. You need not lecture me as if I was a schoolboy. Uh, but so far, it's only a theory. My son's life is at stake. Uh, what I wish to know uh, will the theory become a fact. Wait. It begins. You mean... See, his labored breathing subsides. And feel for yourself how his pulse beat lowers. Yeah. Yeah, it appears normal now. And see his eyelids flutter. Yeah. In the moment, Mills. In the moment, our atom man will be born. Rigid with excitement, the Teufel and Professor Milk bend over the tall, blonde German youth on the bunk as the other Nazis in the cave crowd close behind them. We'll return in a moment for the dramatic climax of today's episode. But first, here's a mighty swell suggestion. Say, gang, you'll want to spread the news around to all your friends that you're collecting those slick new comic buttons that now come in packages of Kellogg's Pet. Because that's the only way they'll know you can trade duplicates with them. And you won't want to miss out on that front. You want to be sure you round out your collection of all 18 different buttons. Yep, that's 18 different comic strip characters. Like uh, Smitty and K.O. and Herbie and Superman, of course. Each one is printed in bright colors on sturdy metal, mighty smart-looking buttons to pin on your jacket or dress or cap. And the best part is, you don't have to send in a single penny for these sh sharp new comic buttons. Not even a box top. Fact is, you can't buy them anywhere. But you can ask Mom to get you a package of that super delicious whole wheat flake cereal, Kellogg's Pet. Inside each package, there's a thrilling prize. One of these bright new comic buttons or a military insignia or warplane button. Remember, that's P-E-P, -E -P, Pep, made by Kellogg's of Battle Creek. And now, back to the adventures of Superman. In a musty, dim-lit cave in the Black Forest of Germany, where the Teufel has injected Professor Milch's son with a solution of kryptonite, Teufel, Milch, and ten other Nazis gazed down breathlessly at the tall, blonde, young German on the rough bunk. One minute. Two minutes have passed since the youth's eyelids quivered and he seemed to be regaining consciousness. Now Professor Milk's voice trembles as he says, What is wrong, Teufel? Why does he not regain consciousness? I do not know. See how pale he is. But his pulse, feel his pulse, it grows so faint. Yeah, I do not understand. But why do you just stand there do something? There's nothing that I can do. Everything seems most satisfactory. He seems to absorb the shock of the transfusion well. You saw yourself how his labored breathing subsided and his pulse lowered. Perhaps in a moment... In a moment he will be dead. Nine Give years. me no more words. Save my son. Do something, I tell Restrain you. Restrain yourself, Mills. Restrain Mills. myself. I tell you that my son is... There's no heartbeat. There must be. There's not. He is... He is... You murdered my son, Doyle. Impossible. My son. Everything went as planned. My, my computations son. were exact. Uh, I checked them over you and over. You killed him, I tell you. You killed him. Impossible, my I say. Son. You have murdered my son, Doyle. Nonsense, Mills. See for yourself. He has no pulse, no heartbeat. Nonsense, I tell you. Everything went as planned. I myself tested the kryptonite solution. My computations were exact. I, I checked them over and over. Your computations were false. Your whole plan was mad. I should have known better than to put my son's life in your hands. I train yourself, Miss. I warn you. You warn me. Who are you to warn me? It's my son who lies there dead. He will yet revive. He must live. Or if the kryptonite was dissolved and is now assimilated in his body, he is our last chance, our last hope. My son is dead and you killed him. And for that... Oh, that I shall see to it that you too shall die. You are a fool, Milch. You should know better than to frighten me. I said your son will let live. But if he does not, then he died for the Vaterland. The Vaterland? Who are you to speak of the Vaterland? All that you ever did was for yourself, for your own selfish ends to gain power and money. That is a lie. It's a truth, and you know it. Was I not in the chancellery the day that your first rocket bomb fell on England and you boasted to Hitler? You and I, Führer, will rule the world between us. You did not say Germany would rule. You said the Teufel would. I live at the General of Bromberg who was present. General, is it not true what I said? Gentlemen, please, we cannot afford to quarrel among ourselves. There are too few of us left. Then take this fool Milch away what? from me until he calms down. I must think. A you. fool am I, why? Yeah, you are a great fool, Milch. Uh, a disgrace to our noble cause. I am a fool am I, a disgrace to our cause. 
I'll show you, you murderer. There are allied soldiers in the forest who hunt for you. I'll bring them here. Oh, that's me. You'll pay for murdering my son. He leaves the cave. Stop him. He only threatens Teufel. He is grief-stricken. When he comes down... Don't fool will do as he says. After him, all of you. Nine. The allied soldiers are all about. They will see us. Then I will go alone. Quick, General. Give me your revolver. Nine milk can be trusted, I tell you. And he is our only chemist, a great chemist. I tell you, the fool will betray us. Give me your gun. Well, here it is. Good. Now remain here quietly, all of you. I will take care of the traitor and return. The boy cannot be dead. There is still a chance. Rushing from the cave into the dense forest, the Teufel furiously pursues Professor Milch. Meanwhile, summoned by the wounded military police sergeant, Bill Nelson, Major Carroll and a squad of American soldiers have arrived at Gottfried's Inn, hardly a mile away, under the cellar of which an underground tunnel leads to the Nazi secret cave in the forest. After treating the wounds of Sergeant Nelson and his companion, Corporal Harry Marks, Major Carroll and an army doctor have just found Gottfried, the innkeeper, who lies faintly breathing behind his bullet-shattered bar. Oh, Major Carroll. Uh, doctor, Gottfried's alive. Maybe he can tell us about the Teufel. Yes. He's done for, though. You'd better make it fast. He can't last much longer. Listen, Gottfried. You're in pretty bad shape. Yeah. I know. Tell me, Major. What will happen to my wife? If she was working with the Nazi underground, too, she'll have to take the consequences. Oh, but she was not. I, I swear it. Your word is no good to me, Gottfried. Now tell me. Uh, listen. If, if I... I tell you where the Teufel is, Major. Yes? You will promise to be lenient with my wife? I can't make any bargains with you, Gottfried, but I'll tell you this. Uh, my government wants Teufel badly. If you help us get him, we might be disposed to deal more kindly with your wife. Yeah. Yeah, I will tell you. Listen. You know the road which goes from the Black Forest to the south of your camp? Yes? If you follow that road almost to the end of the forest... You will come to where it branches off. A wagon trail goes to the south. And a narrow foot trail to the southwest. For perhaps five miles on the foot trail is a small log house where the game warden lives. And there, if, if you make haste, you will, you will find Teufel. Mm. You mean that? Yeah. Yeah, he is there now. But you, you must hurry. Tonight he meets someone there. Tomorrow he, he departs. You're giving me a bum steer, Gottfried. It won't do your wife any good. No, no, I am not. You men have already looked through the inn and found nobody. I know I'm dying, Major. I think only of my poor wife now. But you must hurry, or the Teufel will escape from you again. All right. We can be back in a few hours. I'll leave a car here, Doctor, in case you want to take him to the hospital. Right, Major. Lieutenant Harris, station a guard around the inn and hold anyone who comes here. Right. Johnson, Henshaw, Cohn, get in the car with me. Yes, uh, take the forest road just beyond the camp, Sergeant. Yes, sir. And step on it. Speeding away from the inn, Major Carroll is unaware that the wily Gottfried has sent him on a false trail, and that a few hours' delay in discovering the secret tunnel under the inn may mean the difference of life or death to Superman. We'll return in a moment for the startling climax of today's episode. But first, here again, is our good friend. You know, gang, the weekend is a swell time to check over your collection of those new comic buttons that come in packages of Kellogg's Pet. See how you're coming along. How near you are to having all 18 different buttons. You'll probably want to round up your pals, too, so that you can all trade duplicates. Because these buttons are really worth having. The colors are bright as anything, really stand out against the clear white background. Why, your favorite comic strip characters look so real that, well, seems like they could almost talk. Take Moon Mullins, for instance. You'll get a big kick out of that button. Or Skeezix. Or uh, Uncle Walt. Or Superman himself. There were 18 different buttons in all. That means 18 different funny sheet favorites. What's more, you don't have to send in a single penny to get these smart-looking comic buttons. Not even a box stop. You can't buy them anywhere because they're exclusive prizes in packages of that super delicious whole wheat flake cereal, Kellogg's Pep. So how about asking Mom to get you some Pep tomorrow? Then, inside the package, you'll find an exciting prize. 
one of these slick-looking new comic buttons, or a military insignia or warplane button. There's one in every package of P-E-P, Pep, made by Kellogg's of Battle Creek. And now, back to the adventures of Superman. Thirty minutes have passed since the Teufel left the secret cave in the Black Forest in pursuit of Professor Milk. Now, as the tall, gray-haired General Bromberg and nine other Nazi underground leaders wait nervously around the rough bunk on which Milk's son lies, Teufel re-enters the cleverly concealed mouth of the cave. Teufel. Yeah, here is your gun, General. Two bullets are missing. You will find them in Professor Milk's bag. Ah, what have you done? There are only a handful of us left, and Milk was our only chemist. And he was a great chemist. He was a fool, and his stupid childish sentiment would have made him a traitor. This is no longer his son who lies here, but the future savior of Germany. It is now you who speak like a fool, Teufel. This boy is dead. He cannot be. I made no mistakes. He is dead, nevertheless. His heart has stopped beating. And when I placed a mirror to his mouth a moment ago, not the slightest mist came on the glass. I tell you, it cannot be. He must live. Every ounce of the kryptonite is in his body, and I can get no more. This is our last chance, our last hope to conquer first Superman and then the rest of the world. This is no time to speak of conquering Superman, Teufel. Your stupid shooting of Professor Milk endangers all of us. The Allied soldiers will find him and extend their search for us. We must leave here at once before it goes light. But first we'll bury this boy. None. Yes, within him the kryptonite. The power to destroy our enemies and make me, all of us, such emperors as not even Hitler dare dream of being. A dead youth has this power? He is not dead, I tell you. He cannot be. Where are my papers, my computations? Ah, here they are. <coughs> and again, I have some small thing that wrong with that in my We will pay no attention to this madman. Wiesmann, you're the Schmidt killer. Take space and dig a burial hole and rear the cave. Schnell! Oh, oh, no. hey, you cannot do it. If you interfere, Teufel... You will be shot. What? You dare to speak to me that way to the Teufel? Now listen to me. I will not listen to you. You endangered us in coming here with your crazy schemes. And now there are two less of us. If you must go too, it will be no loss. But I... Silence! Giselle Bormann, tie young Mills to the grave. Need not be deep, only enough to escape attention. No, wait! One more step, Teufel, and I will pull the trigger. All right, Giselle, take him. No, wait. General, look. Look at what? Young Mills. See, his chest moves. He's breathing. Oh, no, it cannot be. It is. See for yourself. He breathes, I tell you, he breathes. And see the color comes what? back to his cheeks. He lives. Yeah, it is true. See, all of you, my atom man lives. Young Miss lives. And now it is the end of Superman and of all who dare to defy the Teufel and the Master German race. <laughs> I have won. <laughs> Look. Look at what? Young Mills. See, his chest moves. He's breathing. Oh, no, better it cannot be. It is. See for yourself. He breathes, I tell you. And look, the color comes back to his cheeks. Yeah, it is true, Turtle. But how can this be? His heart had stopped. It had not really stopped. But without a stethoscope, it could not be hurt. See, all of you, my atom man lives. <laughs> Young Mills lives. And now it is the end of Superman and of all who dared to defy the Teufel and the master German race. Ha, ha, ha. He speaks. Come closer. Be quiet, everyone. You know, Bromberg. Teufel, what is this? His, his voice is so deep now. How do you feel, Milk? I feel sane. So light as if I had no body. But I feel strong. Never have I felt so strong uh, before. Uh, uh, good. Can you stand? Stand? Of course. Why not? Let me see you. All right. There. You see? You do not feel dizzy? No, I feel fine. So strong as if I could carry all of you on my shoulder. Uh, good, good, good. But why do you ask, Toy? Why do all of you look at me so strangely? What has happened? Do you not remember the kryptonite? The kryptonite. Ah, yes, the strange green glowing metal which my father dissolved and which you injected into my blood. Yeah, yeah, you remember the right? Yes, you said it would make me uh, an atom man. You said I would only have to hold out my hands and such a stream of atomic power would flow from my body that... that... Uh, no, it can't be. It can be and it will be. You have now such power that no army, however vast, can stand before you. Not even Superman can resist you. I? 
I have such power, Teufel. You have, my son. I can't believe it. I do not believe it, Teufel. I will prove it to you. First, the gloves. Gloves? Yeah. Here they are. Put them on. Uh. Huh, what strange gloves. They seem to be made of some meshed metal. They are made of platinum and thorium. You must remember always to put them on before you touch the converter. Through their fingers will emerge the atomic power in your body. They fit well. You spoke of a converter? Yeah. It is that small square metal box attached to your throat. It, too, is made of thorium and contains a tiny electronic tube. Then you turn the little switch and impulse flashes to the kryptonite atoms in your blood. No! You must touch the switch or you will explode all of us into nothing. You him, uh... can't be serious, Toy. You will see for yourself. Come. Where? Outside the cave. You two get around Bromberg and all you want is come with us. Go quietly. There are live soldiers all about in the forest. It's still dark, you know. Follow me now. We will go to the top of the small hill just ahead. But why do we go there, Tyber? In a moment, you shall see. As soon as we reach the top of this hill. Be careful. The Allied soldiers may have heard the shots before and be searching for us. You can stop fearing the Allied soldiers, Kenard. Soon all of them will be the slaves of my atom man. <laughs> An atom man? You speak like a fool, Teufel. It is impossible. Fantastic. So they said of the first automobile and the airplane and the telephone. <laughs> And so they said of the first atomic bomb. But an atom man... I that... said you shall see. Here. This is far enough. All of you stand behind us. Now what? Now comes the demonstration of how the master German race is guided by me. Shall rise again to destroy our enemies and rule the world. Yeah. <laughs> now, young man. You will listen to me and do exactly as I say. You are ready? I am ready, Teufel. Your gloves are on firmly. Yes. Let me see if the converter fits exactly over your chunky little vein. Yeah. You have felt where the little switch is. I know. But do not touch it yet. You are facing us. Turn toward the cave below. All right. What do I do now? Now. Turn the switch on the converter. All right. There. What happened? The sound. My voice. What an unusual voice. You are now an atom man. Your voice is the voice of atomic energy. The kryptonite atoms rush through your blood to your fingertips, where they will emerge in an unbroken chain of unlimited power. What is that? Point your hands at the cave, quickly. Yeah, Teufel. As the slim, blonde young German raises his mesh gloved hands, a brilliant white light which seems to illumine the entire forest flashes above him. And then there is a tremendous explosion. What has happened? We'll return in a moment to find out. But first, here again is your announcer. You know, one of the swell things about collecting these new comic buttons that come in packages of Kellogg's Pet is that you're already acquainted with the characters. Sure, you've been following their adventures in the funny papers for ages. So uh, when you get a button with a picture of Winnie Winkle on it, well, it's uh, kind of like meeting up with an old friend or Superman or Harold Teen or any of the 18 different buttons in the series. And is it swell fun to get a new button for your collection whenever Mom opens a package of pets, or to swap duplicates with your friends, or to wear these smart-looking buttons on your jacket or, or dress or cap? They're so colorful and bright, really on the beam. And the best part is, you don't have to send in a single penny to get these keen-looking buttons, not even a box stop. Fact is, you can't buy them anywhere. They're exclusive prices for you in packages of that super delicious whole wheat flake cereal, Kellogg's Pet. Don't forget to ask Mom to get you a good supply of pep. Inside every package, you'll find one of these sharp new comic buttons or military insignia or a warplane button. Remember, that's P-E-P, -P, pep, made by Kellogg's of Battle Creek. Now back to the adventures of Superman. On a small hill in the Black Forest, a young German named Milk into whose veins the Teufel has injected the kryptonite solution, turned the switch on the small converter at his throat, raised his mesh-gloved hands, and pointed them toward a cave a hundred yards below. There was a blinding white flash, which seemed to light the entire forest like day, and then a violent explosion. As we continue now, the Teufel laughs softly and floatingly as the young atom man, General Bromberg, and nine other Nazis gape wordlessly at a great canyon-like hole in the forest floor in which giant trees are uprooted and tons of earth and rock flung wildly into the air have fallen to form new grotesque mounds in the darkness. 
Then Teufel reaches from behind the Atom Man to turn off the converter at the youth's throat. <laughs> well, gentlemen, what do you say now? I, I can't believe it, Teufel. Look, the cave is no longer there. It, it is as if a giant bomb dropped or an earthquake. Did I really do that, choice? Of course you did, my boy. <laughs> did I not say that you now have unlimited atomic power within your body? Uh, it makes my head whirl. Well, I'll destroy all the Allied army camps. Come on. Control yourself. It is I who give you your power, and I who can take it away. Do you understand that? Yes, of course. I understand, sir. It is I who will command, and you who will obey. What are you getting at, Teufel? It is necessary that this boy and I understand each other. Now, hear me, Milch. You will leave here at once and proceed to America. America? Yeah. You will go to America and take care first of Super. Ah, I'll enjoy that. He ruined many of our greatest plans. But how will I find him? In Metropolis, there's a large newspaper called the Daily Planet. Uh, I know the paper. When I studied journalism in an American college, we often referred to the Daily Planet. Good. You may be able to secure a position on the Daily Planet. Tell them you will do anything. Sweep floors, anything. But secure a position on the paper. Why? Because the Daily Planet alone has contacted Superman. You will discover what that contact is. I see. All right. When I have finished with Superman, what then? You will then go to a certain address which is sewn within your right glove. You feel a label in the glove? Mm. Yes. You will find me there. If not me, then another whom you will recognize. I or he will give you further orders. Make haste, Teufel. I see flashlights in the woods. The soldiers must be coming. Yeah. Go then, Milch. Oh. Yes. In America, you must not have such a charming sounding name. Me see. When I was at school there, I was Henry Miller. Ah, Henry Miller it is then. In your jacket are forged papers and a passport. You will proceed to the village of Neuheim, where you will board a train for Berlin. From there, arrangements have been made to take you to Metropolis by plane. Sorry now, the flashlights come closer. Oh, wait. Take off the next glove and pull the collar of your shirt about the converter. Oh, all right. Now go, hurry. All right. Wait. My father, where is he? I hoped I would not have to tell you. When you were in a coma, he left the cave. He was mad with grief, thinking you had died. Two American soldiers saw him and shot him. The train! Where are they? I you see will them. revenge yourself on them and on all their countrymen in due time, but first you must take care of Superman. Then the rest of the world. Go now. Yes, I'll go. I'll take care of Superman. And then of all the United States. Auf Wiedersehen, Teufel. Goodbye, General Bomber. Goodbye, all of you. Hide. Turning abruptly, the Atom Man plunges into the brush to begin his vengeance. Clark Kent said you wanted to see me, Doctor. Yes, Superman. Come in and sit down. Well, I, uh, can't we talk right here? <laughs> if you're worried about the sliver of kryptonite... Frankly, I am. As you know, I can't come within ten feet of it without losing my strength. And you're quite safe in this laboratory. The sliver was destroyed. Come to my desk. Destroyed? Yes, in a final effort to discover the cause for its strange effect on you, I placed it in the cyclotron and bombarded it with atoms. Here we are. Sit down. Thank you. Well, don't keep me in suspense, Doctor. Were you able to find a defense for me against the kryptonite? I'm sorry to say I wasn't. Oh. I did my best, believe me. Yes, I'm sure you did. I tried everything, every method known to science. And all the knowledge of electronics developed during the war. I even called in three of my colleagues, the leaders in the fields of chemistry and biology and atomics. They couldn't help either? No. You see, your problem is most unique. It's without precedent. You can withstand the most intense power known to man... And yet you're vulnerable to the kryptonite in its stable state. That is, before its atomic structure is disturbed. Yes, why is that? That's the crux of the problem which we can't discover. I can only guess at the answer. You were born on Krypton, where the radioactivity of the planet's elements gave you your amazing power. Yes. But here in the atmosphere of Earth, the chemical structure of your body must react in the opposite way to the fragment of kryptonite and make you weak. I can't tell you why that chemical change takes place. Well, can't you find out? I mean, perhaps some, some element or vitamin in my system breaks down. If we found out what it was and I absorbed a great quantity... I thought of that. I even considered exposing you to the tiny piece of kryptonite I had and then subjecting you to a blood test. 
And then I remembered your skin was impenetrable. Yes, yes, that's so. Doctor, something must be done. Der Teufel has a piece of that kryptonite. We traced him to Germany, but he disappeared there. Now, I know he intends to use it against me and then against the rest of the world. Tell me, how large is the piece of kryptonite Teufel has? Oh, roughly about the size of that paperweight on your desk. Uh-huh. Not very large, but the stuff is amazingly pure. You wouldn't need much of it for a bomb powerful enough to destroy all of Metropolis. What? But it's impossible. He'd need a huge factory, and the occupation forces now control all the factories in Germany. But suppose he doesn't intend to make bombs. Teufel told a henchman of his that he intends to create an atom man with the kryptonite. What? An atom man. Some kind of monster he said would be able to control me and enslave the rest of the world. What in thunder did he mean by that? I don't know, I'm sure, but I'm worried. Teufel is a brilliant scientist. I know he is. He won prizes in science twice before the war, and we know he's the man responsible for the rocket bombs the Nazis used. An atom man? I, I can't imagine what he meant. No, I can't either. Unless... Unless what? Unless he had some mad idea. Doctor, would you say it was possible to, well, to somehow incorporate the kryptonite in a man's body? Good heavens, no. The stuff would probably kill him in this Besides, it was very pure. Yes, as a matter of fact, it contains practically no impurity. Well? That's another amazing thing about it. But introducing it into a man's body, why, even if it could be done and the man lived, what would be accomplished? If Teufel discovered a way of harnessing and then loosing the tremendous atomic power you say there is in the kryptonite, while it was in a human body, well, he'd have his atom man, wouldn't he? <laughs> Not even Teufel is that clever. Forget such a fantastic possibility, Superman. Would you say it was impossible? In science, we rarely say anything is impossible. But I'll go so far as to assure you that such an atom man is practically impossible. Well, that's a relief. Now, if only there was some defense for me against the kryptonite. I know the Teufel has some plan up his sleeve, and apparently its success depends on getting me out of the way. As I told you, I haven't been able to invent a defense against it. But I'm working on something now which may help you. You are? What's that? A detector. A detector? Yes, we were able to measure the humming sound the kryptonite makes and its gamma rays. Using the radar principle, we're completing a detector now which will warn you of the presence of the kryptonite while it's still some distance away. How far away? Well, that can't be determined accurately. It'll depend on the quantity of the stuff, whether or not it's subdued by other elements, and so on. But the detector will certainly register its approach within 100 yards. Well, that'll give me a fighting chance, at least. I won't be taken by surprise. Uh, when will this detector be ready, Doctor? Late today, I hope. Oh? Two of my assistants are working on it now. Would you like to see how they're progressing? Oh, I certainly would. It might make the difference between life and death to me. Come with me. Thank you. There's a small laboratory behind that steel door where I do my most important work. Oh? Here we are. In just a moment, this door is always locked. Oh, come in. Thanks. This way. Those two men across the room are working on the detector. I bet they jump a foot when they see Superman in coach. As Superman and Dr. Millicent enter the private laboratory... An angry scene is taking place in Perry White's office at the Metropolis Daily Planet. Seated at his desk, the gray-haired editor scowls furiously at Jimmy Olsen, the freckle-faced cub reporter. And you say Kent just walked out of the office again, Olsen? Well, he didn't walk, he ran. And he didn't say where he was going? No, sir. He got a phone call, grabbed his hat, and beat it. Did he say when he'd be back? No, he didn't. Well, how do you like that? Whenever Mr. Kent gets an ocean, he wants a vacation, which has been happening practically every day recently. He, he, he just takes it. Oh, I don't think he went on any vacation, Chief. I mean, Mr. White. You don't think? Do you know where he went? No, but... Do you I... know where he disappeared to yesterday? No. Or the day before that? No, but or I... Or the think... day before that? The three days before that? No, but I... Well, neither do I. Neither does Lois. Neither does anybody except Kent himself, and he's not talking. Well, I'm sure it must be something important. Something important? Something too important to tell me, his editor, the poor fish who pays his salary... What am I around here anyway? The Moppus boy? I mean the Corpus boy, boy? Uh, I mean the office boy? Right, now take it easy, Chief. You'll blow a gasket. It's my gasket and I'll blow it if I want to. I'll blow a million of them. But your blood pressure. Yeah, it's my blood pressure, too. Oh, and I put up with all I can stand from, can't I? I, I? I won't put up with any more. For years, I've stood for his disappearing whenever he felt like it and, and then popping up again. But this, this is too much. This is the last one. But, Mr. White... Ever since that, that piece of kryptonite was stolen from the museum a couple of weeks ago, Kent's hardly been in the office at all. Oh, but he... that's what it is. 
Mr. Kent must be trying to find the kryptonite. Ah. He said Superman was what? in great danger from it. Superman in danger? Well, of all the, 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 the poppycock. If that's what Kent's wasting the Daily Planet's good money on, it's time he learned a lesson. Yes, sir, he needs a lesson, and I'm going to teach it to him. Well, what do you mean? I mean, I... <laughs> oh, what's that? Oh, oh, oh the intercom. Uh, well, what is it, Miss Blackwood? Is it Mr. Henry Miller to see you, Mr. White? Who? Mr. Henry Miller. Henry Miller? Henry Miller? Oh, who's he? Henry Miller. Is this the young Nazi in whose blood runs the dread kryptonite? We'll return in a moment for the exciting climax to today's episode. But first, here again is your announcer. You know, gang, it's not often you can get such swell prizes without sending in any money, not even a box stop. I'm talking about those brand new comic buttons that now come in packages of Kellogg's Pep. They're so easy to get. Easy to look at, too. Bright comic strip colors, sparkling white background, sturdy metal buttons you'll get a kick out of wearing on your jacket or dress or cap. And what a kick you'll get out of collecting all 18 different buttons, trading duplicates with your friends, and comparing notes on how many you've collected so far. You know, these are real true-to-life pictures of your favorite comic strip friends, like uh, Moon Mullins and K.O. and Smiling Jack and Superman, of course. 18 of them in all, each one just about the best-looking thing you can imagine. So how about getting busy on your collection? Today, ask Mom to get you a good supply of that super delicious whole wheat flake cereal, Kellogg's Pet. That's the only way you can get these new comic buttons, you know. You can't buy them anywhere. You don't send in any money, not even a box stop. You just look inside the pet package and see which prize you find. A nifty, colorful comic button or a military insignia or warplane button. It's a prize for you from P.E.P. Pep, made by Kellogg's of Battle Creek. Now, back to the adventures of Superman. In his office with Jimmy Olsen, Editor Perry White has just been informed by his secretary on the inter-office phone that a Mr. Henry Miller wishes to see him. Henry Miller? Well, who's he, Miss Backrack? Young and terribly good-looking, Mr. Good-looking? Who asked you if he's good-looking? Oh, Who is he and what does he want? Well, I, I'm sorry, Mr. White. He, he's looking for a position. Well, why bother me about it? Send him to Kenzie, the office manager. Oh, but he's looking for a reporter's position. And you always interview reporters yourself. Well, I'm not interviewing any today. I've got enough reporters. Too many, as a matter of fact, for my peace of mind. Send him away. I... Wait a minute. Did you say he was a reporter? Yes, sir. Will you see him? <laughs> Will I? You bet I will. And if he's any kind of a reporter, I'll... Oh, send him in, Miss Backrack. Send him right in. Yes, sir. Oh, send this is rich. Oh, what is? Uh, this. This. It works out perfectly. I said I was going to teach Kent a lesson, didn't I? Huh? Oh, sure, but I don't care. Oh, you will. You will, and so will Kent. He thinks that... Now, come in. Come in. Oh, come in, Miller. Come in. Uh, glad to see you. Why, you may be... Clark, what's the matter with you? I... I don't know, Lois. Oh, don't you feel well, Mr. Kent? Here, sit down. I, uh, think perhaps I'd better leave. No, 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 I'm sorry, Mr... Mr... Uh... Miller, Clark. I'm sorry, Mr. Miller, but It's I... all right. I've got some unpacking to do anyway. I'll see you all later. Bye. 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 Now, Clark, what's the matter with you? I... I don't know, Lois. Well, you look simply ghastly. Where have you been the last few days? Germany. Germany? Cheapers. Now, wait a minute. You left here on Monday, and today is Wednesday. Oh, it's like the weakness the kryptonite gave me. What's that? Huh? What, did I say something? I'm sorry. You said you were in Germany, Mr. Kent. Well, I said that. Clark, what in the name of heaven has come over you? Well, nothing, Lois. Nothing, really. Well, do you realize what's going on around you? I don't understand you, Lois. I don't know what you're talking about. Look, Clark, you better go in and see Perry White. Well, what for? Well, for one thing, he's your employer, and every employer likes to see his employees once in a while. And for another thing, you've been fired. Not again? Well, this time it's serious, Mr. Kent. Really, Jim? Yeah, that's why Mr. White hired that Miller guy to take your place. What Miller guy? Oh, good heavens. Clark, go right in to see the chief, will you? Why? Go ahead now. Open the door, Jim. All right. Oh, uh, uh... Go ahead, Clark. All right, all right. I'm going. You don't have to push. Oh, the crazy thing. Close that door, Jim, will you? What's wrong with him, Miss Lane? I don't know, but it's serious, Jim. Which key connects with Mr. White's office on the intercom? Uh, number three. Thanks. Yes? What is it? Oh, it's Lois Lane, Chief. Clark Kent is coming into your office. Oh, and... no, he's not. Oh, Chief, now listen to me. There's something wrong with Clark. Are you telling me? I mean, seriously. Keep him in your office as long as you can. Now, don't let him go. I'll be in there soon. Now, what's 
that number. Well, what number, Miss Lane? Oh, I've got it here in my book somewhere. I think it's right. Here it is. Three, seven, four, eight. Three, seven, four, eight. Keep them there. He sure didn't act right. That's right. Well, I've never seen anything like... Hello? Uh, Mr. Grady, please. Well, he was completely irrational, Jim. It's the most incredible thing I've ever seen. He just didn't... Hello? Mr. Grady? Uh, this is Lois Lane, Miss Grady. Yes, that's right. I'm fine, thank you. Mr. Grady, I need your help. We have a reporter here at the Daily Planet who seems to have had a nervous break to... Yes. Yes, he's suddenly become completely irrational. Well, I'd like you to send for him immediately and take him out to your restaurant. Yes, you'll need at least two strong men because I'm sure he won't consent to go along willingly once... Mr. Grady, you've got to help me. We have a reporter here at the office who seems to have had a nervous breakdown. Yes, yes, he's definitely irrational. Well, I suggest you send two attendants up to get him because I'm certain he'll resist once he learns his being... As we continue now, Ken and Lois are with editor Perry White in the latter's office. Lois is making every effort to humor Kent while waiting for the rest farm attendants to arrive and winking at Perry White to make him understand. Of course you're all right, Clark. There's nothing the matter with you. Uh, nothing. What are you winking at me for? Winking? W- winking, Chief? You heard me, winking! Maybe there's something wrong with you, Lois. You're nervous as a cat. <laughs> nervous? What? Well, well, well. I'm as calm as a kitten. And then, for the love of Pete, stop winking at me. It's driving me crazy. Oh, gee, sometimes you're an obtuse fool. Look. What did you say? Oh, look, Lois did What you... did you say, Miss Lane? What kind of a fool am I? An obtuse fool. O-B-T-U-S-E. It means dull and stupid. Oh, come now, Lois, you keep but... out of this, Kent. You don't work here anymore. And from this moment on, young lady, neither do you. You're fired. Again. This time it's for Keith. This time I... What's that? You're into office phone. Who asked you? Yes? What is it? Mr. Grady's men are out here to see Miss Lane. Who's Mr. Grady? Oh, and... tell Miss, Miss Backrack to come in, will you please? I will not. What do you think this office is, a cattle ranch? All right, I'll do it myself. But, 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 why, of all this... You keep those men out of this office. This is my office, and I won't have it cut it up with every dumb dick and Harry. Okay, Bob, take it easy. It's a nice day out. How about coming for a walk, huh? Are you crazy? No, we ain't, Bob. Uh... Take his arm, Charlie. Okay. Let go of me, you, 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 you go. Wait a minute, wait a minute. That's the wrong one. It's that one. Who, oh, me? Uh, y- yes, Clark. Uh, these gentlemen want to take you for a walk. A, a walk in the sunshine. Yeah, with the boys and the bees and the boy. Oh, right down, Charlie. Come on, pal. We ain't gonna hurt you. Oh, wait a minute. What's going on here? Lois, can you explain this? Well, uh, you see, Clark, it's, uh, this way. Um... I, I don't think you're very well. And you don't think... Well, I just arranged for you to go and, and, and rest, you know. Uh, but that's all it is, really. Isn't that so, gentlemen? Yeah, sure. You're going to get a nice long rest, pal. Take his arm, Charlie. Okay. Now, wait a minute. This is what I think it we'll is. We'll do all the thinking, pal. That's what we get paid for. Come on. Now, just a minute, please. We're in kind of a hurry, pal. Now, are you going to come along quiet-like, or do we have to make with the business? Do you mind if I ask who you two individuals are? I'll explain later, Chief. Nobody's interested in your explanation. Well? Look, Pop, don't get in our hair. That's all we got to say. Just don't get in our hair. I'll get in more than your hair before I'm through. I'll... Wait a minute. I'll... Wait a minute. Oh, do you think I'm crazy? No, Clark, but I do Grab think... Grab Charlie, he's at... Okay, I'll get... Cut that out, I'll cut it out, I said. Grab another arm, Charlie. Let go of you idiot. Let go of Let go of Do something. I know what you've got to do. Unable to reveal his true strength, Clark Kent decides to submit as the two attendants force him out of the office despite Perry White's frantic protests. Meanwhile, in a shabby basement room in the heart of Metropolis, Henry Miller, the Atom Man, is reporting to his creator, the Teufel. As I say, getting the job at the Daily Planet was nothing. Making contact with Superman is going to be another matter. You made, of course, some preliminary inquiries. I questioned a young reporter named Olsen, but he couldn't give me much information. He referred me to a Miss Lane. Yeah, Lois Lane. <laughs> a very clever young woman. You spoke with her? Well, not really. Clark Kent came in just at that time. Clark Kent? Yeah, I know him well. Now, listen to me. They have given you a reporter's card? Yes. Good. Unfortunately, I will not be able to keep in very close contact with you, at least until Superman is in your power. 
Not only the police and the FBI, but hired gunmen in the employ of the Scarlet Widow are looking for me. Therefore, it will be necessary for you to operate on your own. You are not afraid, are you? With the metal gloves and the converter in my pocket, I'm not afraid of anyone, Teufel. Spoken well, my atom man. Spoken well. <laughs> now, here is what you will do. The editorial offices of the Daily Planet are almost deserted following the printing of the final edition at 7 o'clock in the evening. Mm -hmm. That much I know. Tonight, between 7 and 8, you will go to the Planet and carefully search the desks of the editor, Miss Lane, and Clark Kent for any information you can find that will lead you to contacting Superman. And if I find no such information? I feel certain you will learn something at the offices of the Daily Planet. Perhaps enough to accomplish what has been my dream for years. What's that? To bring the great and powerful Superman to his knees. To see him groveling before me, begging for mercy, to watch him die. Blowed and pink. Go, my atom man. Go and do this thing for me. Gloating even before the kill... The Teufel, his half-crazed mind alive with the thought of subduing the American symbol of truth and decency, sends his deadly, monstrous atom man on the way. We'll return in a moment to learn what happens in the darkened offices of the Daily Planet. But first, here again is your announcer. You know, gang, you're missing out on something the other kids are having a lot of fun with, unless you're collecting those new comic buttons from packages of Kellogg's Pet. You're going to be out in the cold when the fellows and girls compare notes and tell how many different buttons they've collected so far and swap their duplicates. So, better hop to it. There are 18 different buttons in this new comic strip series, you know. Each one with a speaking likeness of one of your favorite funny sheet characters. Done up in full comic strip colors, too. Bright and eye-catching as can be. Looks swell pinned on your jacket or dress or cap. And the best part is, you don't have to send in a single penny for these sharp new comic buttons. Not even a box stop. Fact is, you can't buy them anywhere. But you can ask Mom to get you a package of that super delicious whole wheat flake cereal, Kellogg's Pet. Inside each package, there's a thrilling prize. One of these bright new comic buttons or a military insignia or warplane button. Remember, that's P-E-P, -E Pet, made by Kellogg's of Battle Creek. And now, back to the adventures of Superman. <laughs> Unable to reveal his supernatural strength in the presence of Lois Lane and editor Perry White, Clark Kent decided to submit to being placed in a straitjacket and taken to a rest farm, all because Lois believes he has become temporarily irrational. It is now seven o'clock in the evening. Off in the distance, a steeple bell tolls the hour. Left alone for the first time since he was carried into the rest farm, Kent studies the small room he is in. The door is locked and bolted, but those iron bars on the window shouldn't be too difficult to bend. I'll fix Lois for this one of these fine days. First off with his clothes. <sighs> Irrational, am I? Then you'll make a public apology to me, Miss Lane, before I'm through. There, that does it. Now to tackle those bars as Superman. I don't want to break them, just bend them enough to get out and bend them back. No sense letting them suspect who they had here. Let's see now, these two should do it. There we are. Be able to squeeze through that opening. Well, here goes. So, made it. Not by much. Now to get the bars back in shape. They'll be puzzling this out for a long time to come, those two dodo birds who brought me here. So, that fate is a die. Now, where? Let's see, it's a little after seven. Nobody at the office now. I think I'll drop in and leave a note for Jimmy. Gotta be able to contact someone at the office. Up! Up! And away! Leaping into the darkened sky, Superman wings to the heart of the city. And bare moments later, drops down on the 20th story ledge of his own office window. Now this is a lot faster than elevators. Up with the window. And inside. i better leave the note in an envelope or someone may think it's... A... It's a funny. There's a man in Lois's office rummaging through a desk. Great Scott, it's that new reporter that she fired. Miller. I'll teach him to go through other people's desks and give him the scare of his life. Having a good time, my friend? Superman. Well, is that all you've got to say? No. I'll have something more to say in just a minute. Yes. 
Using a solution of intensely radioactive kryptonite, which is Superman's mortal enemy, a brilliant but crazed Nazi scientist named Der Teufel created an atomic monster able to generate tremendous destructive power within his body. Teufel sent the human monster, a young American-educated German using the name Henry Miller, to America, where, as his first assignment, he was to find and conquer Superman. Speaking perfect English, Miller secured a position as a reporter on the Daily Planet and was introduced to Clark Kent, who, as we all know, is in reality Superman. In the presence of the kryptonite in Miller's blood, Kent became momentarily dazed and irrational. Believing that he was losing his mind, Lois Lane had him taken to a rest farm, from where the Man of Steel escaped that evening. Returning to the seemingly deserted planet office, he found Miller rifling Lois's desk and challenged him. Having a good time, my friend? Superman! Well, is that all you've got to say? No. I'll have something more to say in just a moment. Quickly, Miller's hands dart into his jacket pocket, fumbling for the metal mesh gloves and electronic silk converter that will transform him into a deadly atom man. And unaware of his great danger, Superman stands in the doorway, arms akimbo, a disdainful smile playing about his lips. You're reaching for a gun, Miller. You're wasting your time. You'll see what I'm... Someone's coming just by the lock. Don't move, Miller. Stay where you are. Look! Superman! Good evening, Lois. Well, Jim? Well, leaping, Lois. What are you doing here, Superman? I caught this man rifling your desk. What man? Why, it's Henry Miller. He's our new reporter. I can explain. Stay where you are. As you wish. Superman is making a great to-do about nothing, Miss Lane. I missed my gold cigarette case at dinner. It's quite valuable, and I happen to be very fond of it. I thought that I might have left it in my desk, so I came back for it. This is my first day at the planet, you know. And in the dim light, I must have mistaken your office for mine. What's that? Yes, my office is right next to Miss Lane. That's Clark Kent's office. Oh, he's right, Superman. No, he's right. Clark has been acting very strange lately, staying away from the office for days at a time. And Perry White finally got set up and fired him, and he hired Mr. Miller to take his place. So that's it. Yeah, and it's a dirty trick if you ask me. Well, it looks as if I owe you an apology, Mr. Miller. Oh, that's quite all right. I can see where my being in Miss Lane's office looks suspicious. It was a perfectly natural mistake. Hey, what's cooking, Superman? How'd you happen to be here tonight? Oh, uh, why, I dropped in to see Kent. To see Kent? Yes, oh, I... are you and he working on something together? Well, in a way, Jim. That's very interesting. Is it, Mr. Miller? Uh, why, you're a very famous person. Kent must be very clever to work with. Oh, he sure is. I think Miss Lane would know it by this time. But no, she makes up her mind he's seen things and has him sent away to a rest farm. Now, Jim, I did it for his own good. As I said, Clark has been acting very strange. And this afternoon, right in his office, you were here, Jim. And you too, Mr. Miller. I remember. He became positively irrational. He seemed dazed, and, and he said a lot of things that just didn't make any sense at all. Well, so what? He probably had something on his mind. Of course. Kent's as sane as, well, as I am, Miss Lane. You had no right to send him away. There you see, Miss Lane. I did it for his own good, Jim. I thought he'd, well, I... Uh, I'd get a lot of good out of a stay at the Grady Restaurant. You are much too hasty. I'll see that he's released. Oh, you will? Yes, at once. I've, I've got to be running along. A friend of mine is waiting for me. That is, if you're quite satisfied, I'm not a deadly criminal, Superman. Well, Miss Lane and I both seem to have been a bit hasty today. Sorry, Miller. No hard feelings, I hope. None at all. This has been a most instructive evening. Most instructive. Well, what do you mean? Meeting Superman and all that. Well... Good night, everyone. Good so night, long. Good night. Are you going to the rest farm and get Mr. Kent out now, Superman? What? Oh, yes, Jim. I, you know, I'll sit down a moment. I... Hey, what, what's the matter, Superman? The matter? Yes, don't you feel well? Is something wrong with you? Wrong? I don't know. Alarmed, Lois and Jimmy stare at the broad-shouldered man of steel who sits heavily in a chair, his eyes slightly gray, and a strange weakness flowing through his body. He hears Lois and Jimmy dimly. What is it, Jimmy? Whoa, what's the matter? As from the back of his mind, a voice, his own voice, speaks to the man of steel. This strange weakness. Same as when you were in the presence of the tonight. Thank you, Jimmy. What's wrong? Yeah. Right. What's the matter? Suddenly, this terrible weakness. Are you ill? Can we do something? 
No, no, thanks. I... I'll be all right. Doctor, no, 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 of course not. Wait. That ring on Lois's finger. Look at it. A green stone. Milky green. Right, Scott, perhaps it's... Yes. Here, drink this water, Superman. Oh, thanks, Jim. There. Do you feel any better? Oh, yes, yes, thanks much. That ring, it may be... Oh, don't try to get off the air. Rest a little bit longer. Oh, I'm, I'm all right now. Quite all right. Excuse me, Lord, will you? Uh, come into Kent's office a moment, will you, Jim? Oh, sure. You bet. Shall I come, too? No, no. Stay where you are, please. We'll be just a moment. Gosh, what is it, Superman? What happened? Close the door, Jim. Oh, sure. Now, listen. Would you like to do something for me? Oh, golly, sure. Of course. What is it? Miss Lane is wearing a new ring. It has a green stone. A green stone? Yes. It's on the little finger of her left hand. I want you to get it for me. You want me to get Miss Lane's ring? That's right. Why? What for? Never mind. I'm asking this as a personal favor. Will you do it? Well, well, sure. Then take it to Dr. John Miller. His laboratory is in the science of the Lingham Metropolis University. I know where it is. I took something there from Mr. Kent a few days ago. But why... Never mind the question. Just get the ring and rush it to Dr. Millicent. Tell Miss Lane I admired it and then want to copy it or something. Okay, I'll get it. Good. But are you going to get Mr. Kent out of that, that rest for him? You take care of the ring and I'll take care of Kent. Is that a deal? Oh, it sure is, and thanks a million. I'm awful worried about him. Oh, my. What? Oh, nothing, nothing. Just get Miss Lane's ring to Dr. Millicent as fast as you can. So long now. Oh, wait, the door isn't that way. This window will do. So long, Jim. Up, up, and away! <laughs> Leaping into the dark, star-filled sky, the Man of Steel streaks from the Planet Building and heads for Metropolis University to await Jimmy's arrival with Lois Lane's ring. Is it possible that someone has given Lois a ring with a stone made of kryptonite? We'll know in a moment, so keep listening. But first, here again is your announcement. You know, the other day I heard of a family with five children, three boys and two girls. And they're all collecting the new comic buttons that come as prizes in packages of Kellogg's Pep. At first, they all used to dive in for the button whenever Mom opened a package of Pep. But that didn't work out very well, so now they take turns. Of course, since there are five of them, they eat a lot of that super delicious whole wheat flake cereal. So their turns come up pretty often. Then, if they happen to get duplicates, they exchange them with each other. And you know what? Each one of those kids has already collected five different buttons. And are they enthusiastic about the colorful, true-to-life pictures of their favorite funny sheep friends? Anybody would be. Why, Moon Mullen's eyes are popping, just like in the funny papers. And Herbie has his books under his arm. And Superman looks as if he's going to say any minute, up, up, and away. You know how he says it. Anyway, altogether, there are 18 different buttons, you know. And they're easy to collect. You don't have to send in a single penny, not even a box stop. And you can't buy them anywhere. You just ask Mom to get you some of that super delicious whole wheat flake cereal, Kellogg's Pet. Inside each package, there's an exciting prize. One of these new comic buttons or a military insignia or warplane button. That's P-E-P, Pet, made by Kellogg's of Battle Creek. Now, back to the adventures of Superman. In the laboratory of Dr. John Millicent, Superman stands some 20 feet away from the white-haired scientist who is examining Lois Lane's ring under a microscope. Evidently satisfied, Millicent leaves his stool and approaches the man of steel who steps back hurriedly. Wait, Doctor. Don't come near me. It's all right, Superman. This ring didn't cause those weak spells. It didn't. You mean... The stone isn't kryptonite. It's a type of milky jade. Jade? Then why did I start to lose my strength twice today in Miss Lane's office? I felt exactly as I did when I was near the kryptonite. That's strange. I don't understand it. Not being able to understand it, I'm worried... If things like this keep happening... Don't lose your head, my boy. But, Doctor, nothing else in the world can affect me like that. Nothing but kryptonite. Doctor, I think your Teufel has begun his plot against me. Wait a minute, Doctor. I can't wait any longer. The only thing that can save me now is the atomic detector you're developing for me. With that to warn me of the approach of the kryptonite, I'll at least be able to get away before it overcomes me. You said it would be ready this evening, is it? No, and it may never be. What? 
What do you mean? I'd gladly give ten years of my life if I didn't have to say this, Superman, but... Well, we ran into difficulties just when we thought the detector was completed. You mean? We haven't been able to solve the problem yet, and frankly... Well, I don't know if we ever will be able to. Great Scott. What can I do now? What can I do? Helplessly, Superman stares at Dr. Millicent. His one last hope of protection against the kryptonite seemingly gone. And unknown to the Man of Steel, the danger he fears is even closer to him than he suspects. Due to an error he himself made in Lois Lane's office. At this very moment, Henry Miller, the dread atom man, is in a telephone booth, conveying an important message to the brilliant half-mad Nazi scientist at the other end of the wire. Joyful, it is I, Miller. We have nothing to worry about from now on. Yes, that's right. Well, I made a wonderful discovery tonight. I know exactly how to contact Superman whenever you decide to get rid of him. Of course I know what I'm saying. Wait, what? You say Superman appeared at the Daily Planet this evening? Yes, I was going through Miss Lane's desk, as you told me to, trying to find some clue as to how the paper contacted Superman. And suddenly he was there. And you let him get away? I had to, Teufel, you see. What do you mean you had to? Did you not have your metal gloves and the salt converter with you? Yes, but... What? Nothing. You had only to slip them on, touch the switch on the converter, and such atomic power would have poured from your fingers that Superman would have fallen helpless at your feet. Fool blockhead. Conquering Superman means everything to us. Everything. Once he becomes our slave, the rest of the world will fall into our laps like ripe plums. I know, but I had to let him get away tonight. Just as I was about to put on my gloves and converter, young Olsen and Miss Lane came in. You should have destroyed them, too. I didn't dare to. You told me to act with the utmost secrecy until Superman was in our hands. I said if it was possible. Can you not think at all for yourself? Now Superman has escaped you. Who knows when and where he will return? I know how to make him return. <laughs> if I hear you correctly, did you say you know how to find Superman? I do. How? Tell me. Stop grinning like a fool and talk. I can reach him through Clark Kent. Clark Kent? The Daily Planet reporter? Yes. Kent is the planet's contact with Superman. I found that out tonight. He is. How do you know? Superman came to the planet to see Kent. He told Olsen and Miss Lane that he did. And he admitted that he and Kent were working on something together. So, that is very interesting. So Clark Kent is the Daily Planet's contact with Superman. I can believe that. Kent is very clever. Well, perhaps you did not fail completely after all. Of course I didn't. All we have to do is grab Kent, take him somewhere, and make him understand that his life depends on his bringing Superman to us. Ha! Huh. And have every policeman in Metropolis searching for us? Nine. That is the way for men without brains, for stupid gangsters. But silence. What? Now listen to me. This is what you will do. Beginning tomorrow, when you report to the Daily Planet, you will cultivate Kent. Cultivate him? Yeah. Make him your friend. Flatter him, but not too obviously. Remember, he is clever. Then, once he has become your friend, it should not be too difficult to have him arrange a meeting with Superman. Or we can invent some story of a great trouble in which you are involved and from which only Superman can save you. <laughs> you see? <laughs> yes, and it ought to work. Yeah. And with the power I have given you, we shall rule the world together. Uh, go now, it is late. Go home and sleep, and in the morning you will begin with Kent. All right, Teufel, I... W Wait, I just remembered something. Yeah? This evening at the Daily Planet, when I was leaving, I passed close to Superman. I noticed that he turned pale and his eyes seemed to glaze. Oh, yeah? Yes, and, <laughs> and when I got to the door of the city room, I looked back. He collapsed into a chair, and Miss Lane and young Olsen were asking him if he was sick. He was affected by the kryptonite in your blood. If it had been in its original form, he would have lost consciousness. Yes, I know, but tell me, are you sure that nobody else is affected by it? Of course I am. Did I not walk with it? On contact, a large piece of it will burn the skin, but until its atomic energy is released, it is harmless to everyone except Superman. Then why was Clark Kent affected by it? What is this? Kent was affected? Yes, this afternoon in Miss Lane's office. Kent came in and was introduced to me. He was looking fine, he was in good spirits, but the moment he came near me, he turned pale, his eyes glazed, and he collapsed into a chair, exactly as Superman did this evening. Yeah, 
Yeah, go on. At first, I thought he was having a heart attack, but everyone there said that he was sound as a rock and nothing like that had ever happened to him before. So it must have been the kryptonite in my blood. And if that's the case, how can I get friendly with him? I won't be able to get near him without... Wait! Could it be? Could what be? Himmel. Could it be that Clark Kent is Superman? Clark Kent? Superman? What are you talking about? Yeah, the more I think of it, the more I am convinced that we have stumbled on the most closely guarded secret in the history of civilization. Superman's identity. Yeah, now that I look back, when I myself was involved with Superman, Clark Kent also appeared. Not once, but on a number of occasions. Joyful, it's incredible. And tonight, you learn from Superman himself that Clark Kent is his contact with the Daily Planet. If Kent is Superman, making contact with himself would be easy, Nine. Yes, of course, but... I know what you are about to say. We are not certain. That's right. Then we will make certain. We will prove it to ourselves beyond any doubt. Oh, listen carefully. I have discovered that the alpha rays in kryptonite do not penetrate lead. Tonight, I will prepare for you a vest treated with a special tincture of lead. It will cover your heart and your main arteries and prevent the emanations of the kryptonite in your blood from escaping. It is these emanations, I am certain, that weakened Superman when he was in your presence. I don't understand. Do not interrupt. Tomorrow morning at the Daily Planet, you will approach Clark Kent wearing the lead-treated vest. If he is not affected in your presence, leave and remove the vest. When the opportunity arises, approach him again. If then he is affected, he will have positive proof. And when we have that proof? <laughs> then we have Superman. <laughs> exactly where we want him. Now return here early in the morning for the vest. And bring your mesh gloves and the electronic converter. If we are right, if Clark Kent is Superman, it would be dangerous to carry the gloves and converter with you because of his X-ray vision. You think of everything, don't you, Toy? At the moment, I am thinking of only one thing, my young friend. I am thinking of final victory over the so-called man of steel. I am thinking of ruling the world as no living man has ever His throat-like eyes blazing with something close to madness. The Teufel, whose name means the devil, prepares to expose Superman's double identity. Will he succeed where so many others have failed? We'll return in a moment for today's climax. But first, here again is your announcer. You know, a new kid moved into our neighborhood the other day, and uh, right away when he met Eddie, he spied those brand new comic buttons Eddie's collecting from packages of Kellogg's Pets. So, of course, he wanted some of those comic buttons, too. But, you know, for some strange reason, he didn't know how to get them. Well, he said to Eddie, I'll bet you spend all your allowance for those sharp-looking buttons. Well, when Eddie told him that you don't have to send in a single penny, not even a box stop, he hot-footed it home to ask his mother to get him some Kellogg's Pets. And no wonder, each one has a true-to-life picture of one of your favorite comic strip characters, like Skeezix and Uncle Walt and Winnie Winkle and Superman, of course. Why, all the fellows and girls are set to collect all 18 different buttons in the series. And they swap duplicates with each other to help round out their collection. So if you want to get in on the fun, ask Mom to get you a package of that super delicious whole wheat flake cereal, Kellogg's Pep. Because that's the only way you can get these swell buttons. You can't even buy them anywhere. But inside every package of Pep, you'll find a thrilling prize. One of these smart new comic buttons or a military insignia or warplane button. Remember, that's P-E-P, Pep, made by Kellogg's of Battle Creek. Now, back to the adventures of Superman. It is not quite 9.30 the following morning. Clark Kent, summoned by a telephone call from Jimmy Olsen, enters the city room of the Daily Planet and proceeds to Editor Perry White's office. Good morning, Chief. Good morning, Jim. Good morning. Oh, hello, Mr. Kent. Gee, it's swell to see you back at the planet. He's not back. He's just paying a brief call. Oh. That's right. Jim, you said there was a cable. Oh, why don't you two kiss and make up? This place ain't... Ain't... Uh, isn't the same without Mr. Kent, Chief. I expect my reporters to spend their working hours reporting. A theory with which Mr. Kent doesn't seem to agree. Give him his cable, Rand. Oh, okay. Here it is, Mr. Kent. It's from Army Intelligence in Berlin. Oh, it is? Uh -huh. Good. Maybe they... Oh. Maybe who was? Just a minute. Now, let me remind you, Kent, if that cable has to do with any story you were working on while you were a member of my staff, I'm entitled to it. Well, 
That's a relief. Oh, huh? what is? Oh, all my troubles are over. They are? Uh-huh. What troubles? Der Teufel is dead. The kryptonite is gone for good, and now I can stop worrying about the Atom Man. What Atom Man? You say Teufel is dead, Kent? That's what Colonel Greeley says. Apparently they traced him to a cave in the Black Forest in Germany where there'd been a terrific explosion. They caught a Nazi, a former Gestapo man, trying to sneak out of the woods. He told our men what had happened, hoping to save his own neck. Well, what did he tell them? That Teufel had been experimenting with a piece of kryptonite, trying to create an atom man. A what? An atom man. But we can forget all that now. Teufel blew himself and several other Nazis in the cave to kingdom come, and the kryptonite was destroyed, too. Ah, oh, yes, sir. All Superman's worries are over. But, but... Uh, what... Quiet, Olsen, quiet. Kent, this is a terrific story. Police all over the world are looking for Teufel. This cablegram gives us a scoop. It hasn't been on the teletype yet. Uh-huh. You want me to write naturally, it? Naturally, naturally. What are you standing there grinning like a day? Now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. If I take you back, do you think you can attend to business and let Superman take care of himself? Well... He really doesn't need your help, you know. <laughs> That's what you think, Chief. Well, I'll try to be good. Come on, Jim. Let's get to work. Yes, sir. This is more like it. I'm done. Uh, just a minute, Cap. Yes? I, uh, I told that new man, Miller, to take your office. Oh. Uh, when he comes in this morning, uh, give him a desk in the city room. Okay. Come on, Jim. Well, say, I feel like the man in the death house who just got a pardon from the governor. Well, I don't get it, but as long as you feel good, it's okay by me. Oh, there's Miller coming in now. Huh? You better tell him about the switch. Uh, let me handle it, Jim, huh? No sense causing any hard feelings. Poor Miller hasn't hurt anyone. Smiling for the first time in days, Clark Kent steps forward to meet the one human being on the entire face of the earth who has it within his power to destroy him. This vest will prevent the emanations of the kryptonite in your blood from escaping. If Kent is not affected when you wear the vest in his presence, but is affected when you are not wearing the vest, then we will know he is Superman. As we continue now, we find the slim, blonde atom man wearing the leaded vest at the Daily Planet, where he is talking with Clark Kent in the latter's office. Listen. I heard that Mr. White changed his mind about firing you, Mr. Kent. I guess that means I'm through, huh? Oh, no, not at all, Miller. No, we can use another reporter, and the chief thinks you'll make a good one. Well, that's a relief. I know I'm no great shakes, but you're one of the best reporters in the country. And here I was, Mr. Nobody, taking over your office and expected to fill your shoes. Believe me, I'm tickled pink to see you back. Oh, thanks. Come on, we'll uh, find your desk out in the city room. Swell. Well, let's see. Well, there's a vacant desk next to Jim Olson's. How does that strike you? Couldn't be better. I like Jim. Oh, he's a grand youngster. Got the makings of a first-class reporter, too. Mm -hmm. I, uh... (laughs) I ought to warn you, though, Jim can ask more questions per minute than any six other humans. <laughs> I'm used to that. I've got two kid brothers. Oh, that's they're all. pretty good on the question stuff, too. They live here in Metropolis with you? No, they're out in California with my mother. Oh. They're another reason I'm glad I'm holding the job. Those kids use up a lot of shoe leather. <laughs> I bet they do. Ah, here we are. Say, this looks okay. You'll uh, probably find a lot of accumulated junk in this desk if, if you do just dump it in the basket. Huh? Okay, thanks loads, Ken. Not a bit. Uh, by the way, I wonder if I could ask you a favor. Of course. What is it? Well, I've never worked on a big paper like this, and naturally, I'm anxious to make good. Would you mind if I came to you for advice now and then? Why, certainly not. Pop in any time. Thanks again, Ken. Oh, I really... Hi, Mr. Ken. Hi. Hi. Hello, Jim. Jim. I'm you? going to be your neighbor. Oh, that's swell, Mr. Miller. Look, let's drop the Mr. Miller stuff. Everybody calls me Hank. Okay, Hank it is. <laughs> well, I'd better dump my coat in the locker and get to work. Thanks for everything. I'll see you later. Okay. You know, he seems like a pretty nice guy, Mr. Kent. Yes, he does. He acted very decently about being moved out of my office. He... Oh, good morning, Lois. Hi, Miss Lane. Good morning, Clark. Jim. Listen, what does I hear about the Teufel being killed? Well, that's mm-hmm. right, in Germany. And the piece of kryptonite he stole was blown up with him. Well, I hate to say it, but it's a good thing. Teufel was as bad as they come. Well, now you can stop worrying about Superman, Clark. You're telling me. Well, I gotta get to work. See you later, Jim. You bet, Mr. Kent. Now that you're back on the job, what happened to Henry Miller? Oh, he stays on. He's taking the desk next to Jim's. That's good. The poor fellow was right in the middle. Yes, and he needed a job. Supports a mother and two brothers. Oh, is that so? Mm-hmm. Well, I'll see you later. Incidentally, Miss Lane, you and I have a little matter to discuss. Oh, have we? Yes, have we? It concerns my having been dragged off to that rest farm. Oh, um, that. That. Uh, yes, well, uh... Can't we forget it, Clark? It's a little hard to forget the barred windows. I I just thought I was doing the right thing, honestly, Clark. All right, all right, we'll forget it. 
How about lunch? Well, take me up at noon, will you? Right. Entering his office, Clark Kent closes the door behind him. A few minutes later, Henry Miller, having removed his lead-treated vest and placed it in his locker, returns to the city room and walks past Jimmy Olsen. Hey, Hank, this is your desk. Yeah, I know. I just remembered something I wanted to ask Kent about. I'll be back soon, Jim. Oh, okay. Kent wasn't affected by the kryptonite while I was wearing my vest. Now we'll see what happens when I'm not wearing the vest. Come in. Are you very busy, Mr. Kent? No, not at all. Come in. Thanks. Now, well, what's on your mind, Miller? Uh, Mr. White asked me yesterday to do a story on the candidate for mayor for the Sunday sheet. I was wondering how long to make it. How long? Yes, I suppose we use a lot of photographs. And... I... What's the matter, Mr. Kent? Matter? Yeah. You're, you're looking at me so strangely, and you're very pale. Is something wrong? I don't know. I feel so... So... So what? So weak. As if... All my strength was leaving me. Good gosh, can I do something? I can't understand. Get me some water, please. Sure, of course. Then don't try to move, Kent. Can't Jim! I... Miss Lane, something happened to Mr. Kent. What? What is it? I don't know. Get him a glass of water. Hurry, he's pale as a goat. Where's Miss Lane? Miss Lane? Miss Lane? As Jimmy rushes for a glass of water and Lois dashes from her office, Henry Miller hurries to the locker room where he once more dons his lead-treated vest. Then he returns to Kent's office where Jimmy and Lois are hovering anxiously around Kent's chair. How do you feel now, Clark? Drink some more water, Mr. Oh. Kent. I'll be all right. How is he, Miss Lane? I don't know. You were here when it happened, weren't you, Mr. Miller? Yes, we were talking when all of a sudden he turned pale and said he felt very weak. Well, oh, jeepers. The same thing happened to him yesterday. I can't understand it. It's just like when the kryptonite... The kryptonite? Oh, but there isn't any here. I know there isn't. What does he mean? He's becoming rational again. Just like he did yesterday. He gets illusions that Superman is in danger. Listen, Jim, you better call a doctor. Okay, I'll call Doc Jennings. You better get the chief, Miss Lane. He's out of the office. Oh, dear, Superman should have left him at the rest farm. He's losing his mind. I know he is. I'm sure it is. That isn't anything so serious, Miss Lane. How do you feel now, Mr. Kent? Oh, much better, thanks, Miller. Sorry to have been so much trouble. You are feeling better, Clark? Oh, sure. You I'm sure? Positive. I'm perfectly all right now. I, I can't understand what happened to me. Have you been examined by a doctor lately? Why, yes. I'm in perfect no, shape. Mind. We can't wait that long. Dr. Jennings is out on the case, Miss Lane. He won't be available for a couple of hours. I don't need a doctor, Jim. I feel fine. Now, look here, Clark Kent. You are going to be examined by a physician, and that's all there is to that. Well, I think no. Miss Lane is right, Mr. Kent. I what? certainly am right. Now, look... All right, all right. All right. I know that look in your eye, Lois. I'll go see my own doctor. Good. Get your hat and come on. You too, Jim. Well, now, wait a minute. I don't need a bodyguard. Jim and I are going with you, Clark, to make sure that you don't change your mind. Now, okay. come on. Come along now. Oh, if Mr. White gets back before we do, will you tell him what happened, Mr. Miller? Yeah, all right, Miss Lane. I hope you'll be all right, Mr. Kent. Well, I'm all right now. Be back soon. So long, Hank. So long, Jim. They're gone. Seven. Oh. Three, seven, nine. It worked. That was effective again. You must be. Hello? Teufel, this is Miller. Listen. No names, you fool. I'm sorry, but, but listen, you were right. He is the man you thought, the one we were. Ah, you are positive? Yes. When I wore the vest, he wasn't effective. But when I took it off, he became dazed and almost collapsed, just like he did yesterday. Good. Very good. That makes it much simpler. How are you getting along with him? Fine. I'm sure that he likes me. <laughs> and trusts me. So does Jim Olson. I said no names. <laughs> now, listen to me. The young one you just mentioned. The other one is very fond of him. If we can find a way of getting the young one to the beach house... I don't know how I can do that. There is a way. A story. A what? The promise of a big newspaper story. You are a reporter, are you not... Now, listen closely. This is what you are to do. You will go to your editor and tell him that you received the telephone. Convinced now that Clark Kent and Superman are one and the same person, the Teufel gives the Atom Man final instructions. We'll return in a moment to learn what happens. But first, here again is your announcer. You know, uh, one of the gang said the other day, he can't figure out which is the most fun when Mom brings home some Kellogg's Pep. 
eating big heaping bowls full of that super delicious whole wheat flake cereal or finding out which prize is in the package. Those brand new comic buttons are sure making a big hit with the fellows and girls alike. First off, they're so doggone colorful, bright and sparkling. Look smart pinned on your jacket or dress or cap. Then, those pictures of your favorite funny sheet characters are so lifelike that, well, they look almost as if they could talk. Like Smiling Jack and Moon Mullins and Harold Dean and Superman, of course. You couldn't leave him out. And then there's the fun of collecting all 18 buttons, swapping duplicates with your friends and rounding out your whole collection. So, how about asking Mom to get you a package or two of Kellogg's Pep tomorrow? That's the only way you can get these dazzling new comic buttons. You don't buy them, and you don't send in any money, not even a box stop. They're exclusive prizes in packages of Kellogg's Pep. Inside every package, there's one of these exciting new comic buttons or a military insignia or warplane button. So, tell your mother you'd like plenty of P-E-P Pep, made by Kellogg's of Battle Creek. Now... Back to the adventures of Superman. It is just an hour since Jimmy Olsen and Lois Lane accompanied Clark Kent to a doctor. And Henry Miller, the Atom Man, received final instructions from Der Teufel. Now, as Jimmy returns to the Daily Planet city room, Miller hails him. What's with Mr. Kent, Jim? Huh? Oh, the doctor couldn't find a thing wrong with him. He figured he might have eaten something that didn't agree with him. He made him promise to stay home and rest till tomorrow. I'm glad it's nothing serious. Well, let's go. Huh? Go where? Oh, I didn't tell you, did I? I got a tip on a big story after you left, and Mr. White said I could take you along. Come on, we've got to rush. Oh, a big story? Well, what is it? I'll tell you on the way. I've got a car waiting. I didn't want to go without you. Oh, gee, that's awful nice of you, Hank. You and Mr. Kent have been swelled to me, and I appreciate it. Also, this is a pretty long ride, and I like company. <laughs> Especially your company, Jim. Gosh, Hank, you're as bad as Mr. Kent. What do you mean, Jim? Well, he always acts mysterious, too. We've been driving about an hour now, and you still haven't told me what this big story is we're on. <laughs> I was afraid if I did, you wouldn't want to go through with it. We may run into trouble. Yeah, what kind of trouble? I'll give you a hint. Who's the most dangerous man in the world? In the whole world? Uh huh. Gosh, I don't know. Hitler? No, he's probably dead. Uh, that Nazi scientist, the Teufel? No, he's dead, too. Is he? Sure, didn't you hear about it? Mr. Kent got a cablegram from Germany this morning. Teufel blew himself up experimenting with a piece of kryptonite that was stolen from the Metropolis Museum. He did? Mm-hmm. He was supposed to be trying to create an atom man. An atom man? Mm-hmm. Can you imagine anything so goofy? And you want to hear something else funny? Mr. Kent was scared to death that Teufel could do it. Ah, ridiculous. Well, sure it is, but we couldn't make Mr. Kent see it. Uh, does Kent still believe that nonsense about Teufel and an atom man? Well, he did up to this morning when he got the cablegram saying Teufel and the kryptonite were blown to kingdom come. Now he's like a new man. Uh Uh-huh. A sharp curve coming up. Hang on. Look, we kind of got off the subject, Hank. You were going to tell me what this big story is we're on. We didn't get off the subject. Well, sure we did. You said... I said our story was tied up with the most dangerous man in the world. And you guessed who that is. The Teufel. Uh-huh, that's right. What? You're kidding. The Teufel is dead. The tip I got said he's very much alive. And in a hideout somewhere around here. Around here? No. No, wait a minute. What? How... <laughs> Take it oh. easy, Jim. You'll have plenty of opportunity to get scared. <laughs> Later. Later? Well, I'm scared right now. I, I mean, I'm excited. Listen, who told you Teufel is alive and, and hiding around here? A very good friend of mine who knows all about Teufel. Who? You'll find out. Let's see, we're 43 miles out. We ought to be coming to a small woods. There's a map in the glove compartment in front of you. Get it, will you? It's drawn in a piece of paper. Okay. Well, I don't see any... Say, what's this, Hank? What? All these gloves. They look... Sure, they're made out of metal. Meshed metal. Put them back. What? I said put them back, you little punk. Hey, wait a minute. Who are you calling a punk? Sorry, Jim. Those gloves happen to be very valuable to me. Never mind the map. There are the woods now. Well, what are you blowing the horn for? The road's empty. This is where we're to meet my friends. Ah, hey, there. look out. Two men jumped out on the road. Those are my friends. They were waiting in the woods. Are you sure? They look pretty tough. Especially the big guy in overall. <laughs> <laughs> the 
They're tough, all right, as you'll find out. I'll find out? Well, what do you mean? Ah, you have young Orson. Good, Miller. It was easy. Huh? Say, who are you and how do you know me? Oh, you do not remember me, Orson. <laughs> you and I, ya, yeah, and Miss Lois Lane, too, spent quite a bit of time together about a year ago. What? Cleves, you... you're a teufel. You dyed your skin and you're wearing a black wig and mustache, but... But I know you. Bravo, Orson. And now... Hey, Hank, what is this? You said these were your friends. <laughs> they certainly are. Very good friends. What? You look very stupid with your mouth open, Orson. If you will step out of the car, please, we shall go to a place where we can renew our acquaintance. What? Hey, now, wait a minute. Give me a hand with him, Willie. Just leave him to me, Sergeant. Let okay. go. Just cut Come it off. On. Let go, I say. Uh, What's the idea? Come hey, on. Hank, don't let... Hank! Oh, now I know. You're with him, you, you dirty Nazi. Help! Help! Stop me, Snorty. Let me know what happens, Willie. Really. I will be there shortly. Okay, Cable. Shut up, please. Shut up, I said I'll let you have it. So far, you've done well, Miller. Now we are ready for Superman. You have the mesh gloves and the coat converter? They're in the glove compartment. Good. And Kent is at the Daily Planet? No, he's home. His doctor thought he needed a rest. Ah, you have his telephone number? Yes. You're sure that this will work, Teufel? You have nothing to fear. You need only turn the switch on the converter and such atomic power will fall from your gloved fingers that Superman will be destroyed. I hope you're right, Teufel. I am always right. Go now, drive to the beach house, and make no mistake. I won't. What'll I do after it's over? I will be there to tell you. All right. Goodbye, Teufel. Leaving the Teufel standing in the road, Henry Miller, the Atom Man, drives rapidly away. A half hour later, Clark Kent's telephone rings. Hello? That you, Mr. Kent? Yes. This is Henry Miller. Listen, Jim Olson and I came out here on a story. Oh, yes, I know. The chief told me. Well, we ran into trouble. Bad trouble. What happened? Jim. Yes? What about Jim? He... Mr. Kent, you've got to do something. I, I wanted to call the police, but Jim insisted I call you. Well, tell me what's wrong. Where are you? I, I haven't time to tell you. They'll be back any moment. They they said they're they're going to shoot us. Scott, where are you, Miller? Uh, at a beach house a few miles north of Grant Crossing. But you, you've got to hurry. All right, all right. Take it easy, Miller. Take it easy. A beach house north of Grant Crossing? Yes. I'll be there in a few minutes. A few minutes? It's 50 miles from Metropolis. Oh, uh, I... Well, I I'll contact Superman. You and Jim sit tight, Miller. Don't worry. Superman will be right out. Hanging up, Clark Kent swiftly resumes his true identity of Superman, never suspecting that he is being lured into a trap. A trap baited with Jimmy Olsen. A trap waiting to be sprung by the Atom Man. We'll return in a moment for the thrill-packed climax of today's episode. But first, here again is your announcer. Say, it's a big moment, isn't it, gang, when Mom opens a package of Kellogg's Peps. Because right away, you're looking for one of those exciting new comic buttons all the gang is collecting. You're wondering which button you'll get, whether it'll be a new one to add to your collection or a duplicate so that you can have the fun of trading with one of your pals. Every single one of these new comic buttons is a knockout. Take Skeezix, for instance. He looks just like he does in the funny papers, cowlick and all. Or Winnie Winkle with her curly blonde hair. Or Orphan Annie's dog Sandy looks so real that he could bark. Or Superman, complete with cape and emblem. Now, you'd sure hate to miss out on the fun all the rest of the fellows and girls are having with these new comic buttons. So you'll want to collect all 18 different buttons. Wear them on your jacket or dress or cap. So better get busy. First, ask Mother to get you a package or two of that super delicious whole wheat flake cereal, Kellogg's Pep. Because that's the only way you can get these keen-looking buttons. You can't buy them anywhere, and you don't send in any money, not even a box stop. You just look inside the pet package, and there you are. One of those sharp new comic buttons or a military insignia or warplane button. It's your prize from P.E.P. Pep, made by Kellogg's of Battle Creek. Now, back to the adventures of Superman. <laughs> In a cabin set on a vast, lonely beach, edged by a forest, Henry Miller, the Atom Man, has just completed his phone call to Clark Kent. Now, swiftly, he straps a small square metal box around his throat, directly over his jugular vein. 
This is the converter in which a tiny electronic tube at the turn of a switch will flash an impulse to the kryptonite in his blood and send atomic energy rushing to his fingertips from where it will emerge in an unbroken stream of terrible, shattering power. Quickly, then, he pulls on his meshed gloves of platinum and thorium, throws a scarf around his neck, and has just time to clasp his strangely gloved hands behind his back as a strong burst of wind is heard above the cabin, and then a thud as of a giant dropping to earth. A timeless moment, and the door of the cabin is flung open, and Superman in blue costume and red cape strides into the room. Miller! What happened? Where's Jim? Welcome, Superman. All right, never mind that. Where's Jim, I say? He's with Der Teufel. What? Der Teufel? Yes. And now... What are you talking about? What's that on your throat? You'll see in a moment, Superman. Miller. Miller, what are you doing? What's that... that strange noise? And... what are those gloves you're wearing? You'll see that in a moment, too. They got what happened to your voice. Miller! You can stop calling me Miller from now on. Let me introduce myself. I am the Atom Man. No. No! Don't try to move. You're helpless now. No. Stand back. Don't come near me! Raising his weirdly gloved hands, the Atom Man slowly advances on the Man of Steel, who, helpless, stands rooted to the spot. As all the miraculous strength in his massive superhuman muscles drains away. away. Step by step, the atomic monster in human form moves forward. Finally, he stops, and his thin lips curl in a deadly smile. This is the end, Superman. In a moment, you'll die. Now! Now! Blinding white hot flash that seems to leap from the atom man's meshed fingers. Jagged green sparks that strike against. It's the end for you, Superman. No. The end. No. Never again will you interfere with our plan. Now Germany will rise from its ashes and enslave the world. No. Keep away from me. You're through. Finish. Keep away. My atomic power is destroying you. You're mad, Miller. Stay away. Oh. I can't stand. Oh. oh, the great Superman is on his knees. If only Teufel could see you. Uh, now, die, Superman. No. Die. Stop it. I can't stand it. Advancing to where Superman has fallen to his hands and knees, mortally stricken, the other man points the fingers of his meshed metal gloves, and an unending chain of flashing jacket green sparks strike against the man of steel's limp body. Oh. Oh. Die, Superman! I die! Oh. <laughs> I can't! I... I... Oh. His head sinking, his eyes closing, Superman hears a voice. A voice that somehow breaks through the mist of his waning consciousness. A voice that calls to him desperately. You can't die now. You can't. All you ever fought for. Justice. The rights of man will be lost. Die, Superman! I... Die like a beaten dog! I can't stand anymore. I can't stand it. You must. Make one last effort. Get through the door to the beach outside. Oh, I... I can't. Why? Oh, my strength is gone. I... I can't. You must. Get outside. Get away and recover your strength. Then tear that box from his throat. It controls his power. Must do it. Hurry. This is the end of you, Superman. Die. No. <laughs> Somehow, from somewhere in his wrecked, tortured body, Superman finds the strength to raise himself from his knees, to stagger, reeling like a drunken man through the open door to the beach. And rage, the atom man pursues him. Uh. You can't get away, you fool. You're finished. Oh. Finished, do you hear? Oh. Only a few more seconds and you're through. As the atom man pursues the reeling man of steel, the stream of jagged green death pouring from his meshed hands misses its mark, striking the beach and exploding a torrent of sand high into the air. A huge crater opens up and down into it tumble the man of steel and the atom man, where they tangle in mortal combat. Now I'll finish you! Now! No! That box on your throat! I must get it! 
His arms like lead, his fingers numb. The man of steel claws at the converter on the atom man's throat. Almost reaches it, but the atom man twists away, trips, turns, and is temporarily hidden from his prey by a deluge of sand which falls between and around them, forming a maze of small hills and dunes. Now, my chance, get away before he finds me. Where are you? I... You can't escape. Must... Where are you? Must get away. Must get strength back. No. His great chest no. heaving, his eyes burning like live coal. No. Superman drags himself up the sandy slope of the crater, while the Atom Man, seeking him wildly in the maze of dunes, points his hands this way and that, blasting vast new craters in the beach. Curiously, the Atom Man hunts for his prey. Finally, sees him staggering toward the forest. Shouting triumphantly, he races after him. Now I've got you! Stop, you fool! Stop! Oh, if I can reach the woods and lose it! Oh. Again, the Atom Man points his meshed hand toward the Man of Steel, sending atomic lightning flashing into the forest beyond the beach. Great trees twist as in a violent earthquake and hurtle skyward, trailing masses of white roots like giant twisting snakes. One huge oak flung high into the air crashes down on the staggering figure of Superman, pinning him to the beach. He shudders, clasping the thick trunk lying across his chest. Minutes ago, he could have hurled it far out into the gray ocean like a toothpick, but now his weakened hands only close over it, then fall away. Through dimming eyes, he can see the Atom Man approaching. One last convulsive heave and the giant tree rolls a few scant inches, but not enough. Now the Atom Man is closer, the eerie whine and crackling of the deadly atomic energy roaring in Superman's ears like some vast milestone, sucking him down to a bottomless pit. Oh, I've got you, Superman! You can't escape again! This time you're finished! Ha, 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 ha! Ah, Hurry, Toyful! Hurry and see the end of Superman! Like a wolf closing in for the kill, the trifle races across the cratered, blasted beach to the edge of the forest where, trapped under a giant tree, all the great strength gone from his once mighty muscles, Superman lies prone, his eyes closed against the shaking earth, while the Atom Man hovers above him, jagged atomic lightning flashing from his meshed fingers to strike and strike and strike again at the limp body of the Man of Steel. We'll return again in a moment for the climax of today's episode. But first, here is your announcer. You know, gang, there are 18 different funny sheet characters in this brand new series of comic buttons that now come in packages of Kellogg's Pet. So you'd better hop to it and collect them all. You'll want every single one of them. Superman and Uncle Walt and Perry Winkle and all the rest. Because there's a doggone sharp looking, full comic strip colors. And also because it's no end of fun rounding out your collection, swapping cupigates with your pals, and seeing who is the first to get all 18 different buttons. And they're so easy to get. You don't send in a single penny, not even a box stop. Fact is, you can't buy these new comic buttons anywhere. They come only as prizes in packages of that super delicious whole wheat flake cereal, Kellogg's Pep. So ask Mom to get you a package or two of Pep tomorrow. Then see which prize you find inside. One of these exciting new comic buttons or a military insignia or warplane button. That's P-E-P, Pep, made by Kellogg's of Battle Creek. Now, back to the adventures of Superman. As Superman lies helpless under the deadly atomic bombardment of the pitiless Atom Man, Jimmy Olsen is a prisoner in a shack in the woods nearby, guarded by Teufel's henchman Willie, an ox-shouldered, broken-nosed man in overalls. For several minutes, they have heard explosions in the distance and the sounds of giant trees being uprooted and crashing to earth. Now they feel the floor and walls of the shack begin to shake. It's an earthquake or something. We've got to get out of here, mister. You mean I got to, not you, Olsen. What do you mean? I will told me to keep you here till he got back. I ain't staying, but you are, see? I'm going to lock this door. No, I can't. The shack is going to cave in. Come on, get back in there. Look out, here comes the room. Oh! The roof of the flimsy shack crashes down. A falling beam strikes Teufel's burly henchman on the back of the neck, felling him like an ox. Ducking, leaping wildly through the wreckage, Jimmy escapes into the forest. His heart pounding, he seeks some avenue of escape through the tall trees and underbrush. Spots a narrow, hardly perceptible trail and follows it. 
could hear a dull rumbling all around him. Uh, it's an earthquake. I, I gotta get out of here. I, I, I just gotta. Plunging onward, the boy reporter tops a small rise and finds himself out of the woods. Below him is the sandy beach, gashed and cratered, as if two great armies had fought over it. And beyond that, the sullen gray sea. Panting, Jimmy pauses to catch his breath. Then, suddenly, a new sound cuts through the rumble, drawing his attention to a scene on the beach below him. He stiffens and turns ghastly pale. It's, it's Teufel and, and Miller. Something shooting out of Miller's hand. Big green sparks like, like lightning. And they've got someone on the ground. They, they're killing him. I've got to get help. I've got to get help and quick. His hair standing on end, Jimmy Olsen wheels like a frightened deer and plunges back into the woods, his eyes wide with the horror of what he has seen. Onward he races, tripping, falling, picking himself up and plunging on through the forest, filled with that awesome rumbling. Meanwhile, on the lonely, devastated beach, the Teufel looks on with pleasure as the Atom Man continues to bombard the now dead, unconscious body of Superman with the terrible, unleashed power of atomic energy pouring from his mesh fingers like devil's pitchfork. Oh, well, take it easy. I'm coming. What's all the rush, son? Oh, excuse me. I, I'm Jim Olson. Can I can I use your phone? I ain't got no phone. Oh, golly. What'll I do? Well, what's the matter? You look like you've been around. I gotta get get to a phone and call the police. Well, why? What happened? Oh, gosh, it's terrible. Green sparks were shooting out of Miller's hands. Green sparks? Yes, like lightning. He was shooting them at some man on the ground, and, and Teufel was watching now, him. Now, 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 wait a minute. What is all this about? Uh, you sure you ain't dreaming, son? Oh, please, mister, don't waste any more time. I saw it, I tell you. Well, where? On the beach. It was all ripped up like like an earthquake in it. Big trees were knocked down. Oh, please, don't just stand there. The man might already be dead. Uh, now, somebody's dead. Uh, listen, son, you'd better sit down and take a rest. Oh, I'm all right, I tell you. Look, here's my wallet. I'm a reporter for the Daily Planet. Uh, let's see the wallet. Here, look at it. Hurry. Uh, yeah, it does seem like you're a reporter. Well, of course I am. Please, mister, take me to a phone. Well, okay, come on. I'll take you to Sam Tyler. He's game warden. See what he thinks about all this. Has he got a telephone? Yeah. He's about a mile from here. Fellow shooting green sparks out in his hands. As the reluctant trapper leads Jimmy Olsen through the woods, a few miles away on the beach, the atom man, commanded by Der Teufel, has turned the switch on the converter at his throat, stopping the flow of atomic power through his metal gloved hands. His eyes blazing, he stands by impatiently as Teufel bends over the limp, motionless figure of Superman. All about is a scene of chaos. Great trees ripped from the forest above the beach, split and blackened as if by lightning, lie all about in crazy profusion. The vast beach from the gray sea to the edge of the forest is gashed and torn into deep trenches and craters, almost as if it had sustained an artillery barrage. Only the wind and the low roar of surf break the silence of night, as finally the atom man steps forward impatiently, and again speaking in the normal voice of Henry Miller. Well, Teufel, are you satisfied that he's dead? He is not dead. What? He must be. I tell you, he is not. His heart still beats. I faintly, but it still beats. That's impossible. Why, that huge tree that lay across his legs, it's entirely disintegrated. But Superman still lives. What must we do to kill him? What? He can't be alive. Will you stop saying that, you fool? I tell you, he still lives. See for yourself. Put your ear to his chest. I can't hear any heartbeat. Listen again. I still can't hear it. I tell you, he's dead. He's stone dead. Now, come on, Teufel. We've got things to do. Big things. We can do nothing until Superman is dead. But he is. I say he is not, and he must die. He must. Everything depends on it. I tell you, be, be quiet. Wait, I have my pistol. Yeah, that will finish him. You're wasting your time. The bullets just bounce off his body. Yeah, they cannot penetrate. What will we do? If you'll just listen to me. I listen to you? Are you out of your mind? It is you who must listen to me. Yes? I don't know about that. Then you had better know, fool blockhead. Have you forgotten that it is I, der Teufel, who gave you your great power and that I, der Teufel, can also take it away? Can you? Yeah, I can. Wait. Wait. We must not quarrel now. Together, the world is ours. But first... This tiny spark of life which remains in Superman must be extinguished. Let me think. There must 
be a way. I tell you, he's dead. But if it'll make you feel any better, I'll turn on the converter again and... Nine. You must not. Why not? The atomic energy of the kryptonite in your blood can be exhausted. What's that? You have already consumed a great deal of it today, and I cannot give you any more. My kryptonite can be exhausted. You didn't tell me that. I'm telling you now. That is why we must dispose of Superman permanently, so that he cannot interfere with us. But if the kryptonite can be exhausted, how... In case the sight of Superman's dead body is not enough, we need only one more demonstration of your power. We need only wipe out Metropolis... And America and the rest of the world will surrender to us. But suppose that isn't enough. Suppose America and England and Russia won't surrender at once. And I've exhausted the atomic power of the kryptonite. In that case, there's always the Scarlet Widow. The Scarlet Widow? Who is she? An arch-criminal who owns the other three pieces of kryptonite. She does? Yeah, she... Ah, I have it. What? How to finish Superman. How? I will tell you. Despite his amazing powers, he is still a man, a human being. He requires food and drink. We will take him to the shack in the woods where Willie is guarding young Olsen. We will dispose of Olsen, and then we will keep Superman in a coma until he starves to death. That's ridiculous. It's a lot of needless trouble. I tell you, he's as dead as he'll ever be right now. I say he is not. Now listen to me. Why, for you're crazy. I crazy? How dare you speak to me that way? Your power has gone to your head. If you can't see that Superman has finished, you are crazy, and I'm taking matters into my own what? hands. Listen to me, you... No, you... Troy, for you listen to me. Superman is done for, and our next step is to destroy Metropolis, then call on the world to surrender to us and to Germany. You dare to give me orders? I, who gave you your power... Yes, you gave me my power, but I've got it now, and I intend to use it as I see fit. I don't need you anymore, Troy. What? After all I have done for you, you dare to defy me? Yes. Keep your hand away from that gun. Uh, now, wait. Oh, you, you think I would shoot you, my atom man? I know you would. You shot my father. You murdered him in cold blood. No, that is a lie. It's the truth. General Bromberg told me. I've been waiting for this chance, Teufel, but I didn't dare make a move because I needed you. But now I don't need you anymore. You do. You are helpless without me. And the kryptonite in your blood is exhausted. You told me where to get some more, remember? <laughs> The Scarlet Widow. Oh, no, no, Miller. Yes, and now you're going to die, Teufel, the same way Superman died. No, don't touch that converter. Don't touch it. Too late, Teufel. It's building up. I'll shoot you out here. Too late, Teufel. This is the end for you. Throwing the switch on the converter at his throat, the other man raises his metal gloved hands toward the Teufel, who snatches his gun from his pocket. We'll return in a moment for the dramatic climax of today's episode. But first, here is your announcer. Yes, sir, the mothers of all the gang are sure being rushed for lots of Kellogg's Pep these days. Because, of course, it's such a super delicious whole wheat flake cereal. And because it's the prize package where you get those brand new exciting comic buttons all the fellows and girls are collecting. Real true-to-life pictures of your favorite funny sheet characters, like uh, Uncle Walt and, and Skeezix and Orphan Annie and Superman, of course. Boy, those pictures are so doggone real, you'd think they were going to talk. They're done up in full comic strip colors on bright white enamel buttons that really show up when you pin them on your jacket or dress or cap. And it's no end of fun to compare notes with your friends and see who's got the most different buttons and trade duplicates to help round out your collection. What's more, these new comic buttons are easy as one, two, three to get. You don't send in any money, not even a box stop, and you can't even buy them anywhere. All you do is to ask Mom to get you a package or two of Kellogg's Pep because that's the easy way and the only way you can get your exclusive prize. Just look inside the package and see which prize you find. One of those exciting new comic buttons or a military insignia or warplane button. Remember, these swell prizes come only in packages of P-E-P, Pep, made by Kellogg's of Battle Creek. Now back to the adventures of Superman. On the lonely, ravaged beach, as Superman lies motionless on the ground, the Atom Man and his former master, De Teufel, have quarreled violently. Drunk with his own power, the Atom Man turned the switch on the converter at his throat, releasing the deadly atomic energy of the kryptonite in his blood. As Teufel snatched a pistol from his pocket, the Atom Man raised his mesh gloved hands toward him. This is the end of you, Teufel! Nine! Nine! Ah! <laughs> That's all, Teufel! You're finished! Now we're even, Teufel. You killed my father and I killed you. <laughs> now I have the power to rule the world. What's that? Sounds like police sirens coming this way. <laughs> I'll stop them. 
No, no. Teufel said that I can exhaust the kryptonite. I'll have to be careful until I can get more. I'll just be very Superman in this hole and get away through the woods back to my property. Now to cover him up. I don't want him found and the police warned what to expect. <laughs> Till I'm ready. I'll let them find Teufel, though. They'll think lightning killed him and knocked down all these trees. There. There, they'll never know Superman is under there. Just smooth it out a little. Oh. Here they come. Time for me to go. <laughs> goodbye, Superman. And goodbye to you, too, Teufel. <laughs> Swiftly, the atom man fades into the woods, leaving the dead Teufel lying on the beach and Superman buried deep under the sand. The brilliant half-mad Nazi scientist has met his end at last. Destroyed by the deadly atomic monster he himself created, Jimmy Olsen, having escaped from a henchman of Teufel's, has arrived at the ravaged, blasted beach with Sheriff Simpson and a deputy. Unaware that Superman lies almost beneath his feet, Jimmy stands by as the sheriff and his deputy bend over the charred body of the Teufel. The Teufel what? dreamed of enslaving the world. Listen. Ah, appears to me this man was struck by lightning. Wouldn't you say so, Fred? I think nothing else, Fred. Uh, must have been one awful freak storm that hit here, too. There were the big craters in the beach, and them trees down the woods. You notice how they're split and blackened clear through? Yeah. Olsen? Yes, sir? Take another look at this fellow. You still think he's that Nazi Teufel? Oh, I'm sure of it. Especially now he hasn't got his phony wig and mustache. Huh? Well, I called Inspector Henderson. He'll be out here pretty soon. He'll know. Now, uh, what about those other two men you said you saw here? Must have been more than two, Sheriff, judging by all these tracks in the sand. Well, there were only two, besides Teufel, I mean. One was Henry Miller, our new reporter. He was the one who was shooting the green sparks out of his hands. Green sparks? Yeah. They were like, like little bolts of lightning. And they were coming right out of his hand. What the... Order, Fred. Go on, Olsen. Oh, Miller was shooting these sparks at a man in the sand. It was right about here, at the edge of the woods. It made the whole beach and forest shake. At first, before I saw what it was, I thought it was an earthquake. Great g Yeah, great fiddlesticks. Olsen must have seen the tail end of the lightning storm. Some of the boats probably hit behind Miller, and Olsen thought they were coming out of his hand. They were, and there wasn't any storm. Yeah, don't talk foolish, son. Only lightning could split these big trees down the middle and scorch them that way, and blast these big holes in the beach. But I tell you... Never I... mind, never mind. I told you what happened. Now, uh, what about this man you say was lying on the sand? You, uh, sure it wasn't this one? Fellow you claim Teufel? Oh, no, Teufel was standing behind Miller. I don't know who the other man was. He was lying on his stomach. Was he a big fella? Big or small? Well, he was pretty big, I think. He was all hunched up, but I can't be sure. He had on a red sweater or jacket or something. Maybe it was only a muffler, but I know it was red. He... I think he was dead. But Miller kept shooting those sparks at him. And if he was dead, where is he? That's what I was going to ask. Oh, gosh, how do I know? I got scared and ran back through the woods to get help. Maybe Miller buried him. Why would he bury him and not Teufel? I think... Uh-oh. Just... What do you got there, Fred? Yeah, I think it's a... Yeah, yeah, a gun, a thirty-two. Oh, I see it. Here. I saw part of the barrel sticking up out of the sand. Yeah. Yeah. Four shots fired from it. Yeah, not very long ago, either. You can still smell powder. Maybe that's what Olsen saw. The sparks, I mean. Miller might have been shooting the guy on the ground. No, I yeah, can't. It could be. Come on. Do a little digging where you found the gun, Fred. Miller, bury the fella. Hey. Okay. It's right here. Yeah. Start digging. Yeah. You look around, Olsen. Maybe you'll find something else. Okay. Uh, don't seem like nothing's buried here, sir. Yeah, well, go down a bit more. Uh, Wait. Hey. What's this? What? Hey. This little piece of cloth, see? Red. Uh-huh, but what... Olsen said the fellow was wearing something red, a sweater, a jacket or something. Well, that piece of cloth didn't come out of a sweater or a jacket. It's too silky. Yeah, it might have come out of a muffler, though. Olsen said it might have been a muffler he saw. Yeah, look here. Darkened. Scorch-like. Might be powder burns, huh? From the gun? Yeah, maybe. Come on, take some more. All right. Uh, nothing yet. Yeah, keep going. Found the gun here, a piece of cloth. Hey, 
Sheriff. Wait, Fred. What is it, son? Come on over here. I found something. Uh, okay. Uh, where is he? There at the edge of the wood. Oh, yeah. What'd you find, Olson? Come over here and see. Yeah. I don't want to touch it. Maybe he found the other dead guy. Yeah, we'll see. Yeah. Okay. What is it, Olson? There. See? On the ground. What? For well, shucks, I hey, thought... Hey, it. look, Fred, look. There's another piece of red cloth. Sure enough. That's what I wanted to show you. Yeah, it looks just like the piece we found back there. Yep. Scorched and dark in the same way, too. Any blood on it? Nope. Uh, don't get it. Oh, maybe Miller dragged the man into the woods here and buried him. And the piece of red cloth could have come from the man's clothes. Remember I told you he was wearing something red? Say, that might be it, Sheriff. The ground looks fresh turned over, too. Maybe if we dig oh, right here... Oh, the ground looks fresh turned over. That's when the tree's getting uprooted in lightning storm. But if we dig right here where I found the knife... Yeah, we can't go digging up the whole beach and woods. Tell you what to do, Fred. You and Olsen take my car and drive to Linwood. Find Doc Akers and bring him out here and look over the body. By the time you fetch him, Inspector Henderson ought to be here, and then... Well, I'll wait for the inspector. No. Gosh, i got to call the planet and tell him what happened to Teufel. This is a big school. I don't want any newspaper stories till Inspector Henderson says it is Teufel. I want you to go to state police headquarters with Fred Olson. Oh, but I'm You sure. heard me? You give state headquarters a description of Miller and the car he was driving. So they can get an alarm out for him. I tell you. Will you stop arguing? Miller maybe killed somebody. And if that's really Teufel like you say... Well, it's Teufel, all right. Well, then if Miller was working with him, Miller's a Nazi too. Maybe a murderer. We've got to find him. Now get going, both of you. Okay, sir. Oh, come on, Olson. Uh, I'm coming. Boy, they better get Miller. I tell you, there were green sparks shooting out of his hands and shaking the ground. Golly, I wish I knew where to find Superman. He'd make short work of Mr. Henry Miller. Unaware that he himself prevented Sheriff Simpson and his deputy from finding Superman by calling them away just when their probing hands were a few scant inches above the buried man of steel, Jimmy follows the deputy to the sheriff's car. What will happen next? There's an exciting climax ahead, which we'll bring you in a moment. But first, here again is your announcer. You know, gang, a lot of people think it's more fun to anticipate something, you know, to look forward to it, than it is to actually have it. But believe me, that's not true of those new comic buttons you fellows and girls are all collecting from packages of Kellogg's Pep. Of course, it is fun to look forward to Mom opening a new package of Pep and, uh, you know, to wonder which but button you'll find inside, but it's just as exciting when you get that smart-looking button. Maybe it's one of the new comic buttons you need for your collection. Might be Superman or Winnie Winkle or Orphan Annie. Or maybe it'll be a duplicate that you can swap with one of your friends. Boy, that's swell fun, too. And you'll get a kick out of pinning those comic buttons on your jacket or dress or cap and wearing them for all the kids to see how many you've collected. And the best part is, those nifty comic buttons are so easy to get. You don't send in any money, not even a box stop. And you can't buy them anywhere. You just ask Mom to get you some of that super delicious whole wheat flake cereal, Kellogg's Pep. Inside every package, there's a thrilling prize. One of these new comic buttons with pictures of your funny sheet favorites or a military insignia or warplane button. There's a prize for you in every package of P-E-P, Pep, made by Kellogg's of Battle Creek. Now, back to the adventures of Superman. It is just before sunset on the lonely, ravaged beach where Superman and the Atom Man fought their Herculean battle. Teufel's body has been removed. Inspector Henderson and state police officers have visited the scene, made photographs, measured footprints, and departed. Now all is silent, save for the low murmur of the wind and the lapping of the outgoing tide. But suddenly the silence is broken as two men dressed in hunting clothes and carrying shotguns come through the fringe of the woods toward the beach. Black and white water spaniel roaming in the brush suddenly springs out on the sand and plumed tail aloft rushes off off the beach, barking. <laughs> Listen to that crazy animal. Can't wait for us to knock a couple of crackers down so we can go fetch them. <laughs> I can't wait either. I haven't had a decent shot yet this season. Uh, we ought to get plenty of shots in the next half hour. We got three mallards and a pintail on this beach yesterday, and the wind's better today. Ah, I hope you're right. All I wanted... Hey, Joe. Look. Holy smokes. What happened to the beach? I don't know. It sure is torn up like it was bombed. Yeah. Look at those trees up ahead. They're all down. It must have been a hurricane. Ah, uh, we'd have heard about it. Probably a freak electrical storm. See how that big oak is split right down the middle? Yeah. 
and it's scorched. Oh, you're right. Only lightning could do that. Boy, glad I wasn't around. Me too. Hey, look at that hole. Oh, it must be ten feet deep. I see it. Uh-oh. I see something better. Flight of mallards coming in straight ahead. Pull it, Mark. Don't move. Right. I'm ready. Where's the dog? Don't worry about him. He knows his business. Well, well how do you like that? Bark on his fool head off and scaring the ducks away. He never did that before. There. Come here. There. Come here, I say. He's digging in the sand. I'll teach him. Come on. He knows better than that. There. Come here. Come here, boy. He must have found something. Look how deep he is already. I can just see his tail. Yeah, that fool dog. And after all the years he's been hunting, digging up a dead fish and barking his head off with duck overhead. It's going to hear from me. Here. Stop that digging. Come out of that hole. Come out, I say. What have we found down there? A ah, dead fish or a sand crab or something. You hear me, Vic? Come out of there. No, all right. If you won't, I'll haul you out. Aren't you ashamed of yourself? A pedigree of hunting dog digging for dead fish. Come on out. He sure doesn't want to come out of there. I don't know what's come over him. Biff, cut it out. Stop that noise. How do you expect any ducks to show up with you barking your fool head off? Here, look at him. He wants to dig some more. I'll dig him. Biff, stop it. Stop it, I said. What the... Hey, Joe. Wait. Huh? What's the matter? Come here. What is it? Look down there where the dog was digging. Shut up, Biff. Where, Mark? At the bottom of the hole. Sticking out of the sand. You see? Uh, oh, smoke. Looks like a man's foot. That's what it is. Somebody's buried down there. But her... Well, that's why Bip... Come on, Mark. We've got to see about this. Help me get the sand off. Get away from here, Bip. Get away. Come on. I can't understand how anybody would be buried here on the beach. That tide might have washed him up. Yeah, maybe, but... I don't like this, Joe. I don't either. Yeah. Hey, he's dead as a doornail, Joe. Yeah, what'd you expect? Buried under the sand. Poor guy. Wonder who he is. Beachcomber, maybe. Say, that's funny. His clothes are ripped to pieces. You can't even make out what they are, but I don't see any marks on him. I don't either. Well, that is funny. What do you suppose happened to him? Search me. He wasn't drowned, you can tell that. You know? Come to think of it, he must have been struck by that lightning. Lightning? Sure, the lightning storm that knocked, knocked down all those trees and tore up the beach. Big Bolt must have hit him, dug a hole in the beach and buried him. Look at his clothes, or what's left of him. See how charred they are? If it was lightning that burned and tore his clothes up that way, he'd be burned too. Well, that's right. Well, no use worrying about Hey, what that. was that? Oh, it was what? I heard a low moan. Didn't you hear it? No. Oh, maybe you heard Biff up the beach. Biff's way up the beach. Oh. There it is again. Yeah. Holy smoke, Joe. This fellow's alive. Ah, uh, how could he be buried under the sand? Wait a minute, wait a minute. See if I can hear his heart. Well, you felt his heart before. I just put my hand over it. I was sure he was dead. Quiet now. Hear anything? Not yet. Wait. Yeah. It's beating all right. It is? Yeah. I can hardly hear it, but it's beating all right. We've got to get him to a doctor fast. Take his legs, Joe. Okay. Oh, no. No, wait. You better not move him. He might be hurt inside. Now, I'll tell you what. I'll drive to Sam Tyler's and call the hospital at Linwood. Send out an ambulance. But his heart's weak. He may go any minute. Getting the ambulance here will be better than us carrying him to the car and then giving him a bumpy ride. The ambulance can come in on the beach road. I'll make it as fast as I can, Mark. Come on. Leaving his hunting companion with the still figure of Superman, Joe Nelson rushes away to his car. Within an hour, an ambulance roars up the beach road, and two attendants bearing a stretcher hurry across the dark sands. A short time later, in a room in the Linwood Hospital, Superman lies in a bed, his eyes closed, scarcely seeming to breathe. Leaving an intern and nurses with him, Dr. Bruce, chief of staff, steps into the corridor where Sheriff Simpson awaits him. Uh, how is he, Doc? Very hey, low, Sheriff. Still in a coma. Uh, what are his chances? Frankly, not too good. Our only hope is that he'll respond to a blood transfusion. We're getting him ready now. By the way, his people ought to be notified. You able to find any identification in his clothes? Huh. Call them clothes? Learn no more than burn up rags. Fall to ashes if you touch them. If you had any papers on them, they're ashes too. Hey, Doc, uh, you figure he was struck by lightning? 
I never heard of a man struck by lightning who didn't show a mark of it on his body. Yeah, me neither. His clothes all ripped to pieces and burned. How could that happen without there being a mark on him? I don't know, Sheriff. This is a very puzzling case. Yeah, you said it. Sure hope you can pull the poor fellow through, Doc. Chances are he's the one young Olsen saw on the beach with them two Nazis. Nazis? Mm-hmm. What Nazis? Mm, ain't in the papers yet, but one of them was Teufel, a Nazi scientist. He was killed by lightning, no doubt about that. The other one, Henry Miller, got away. This fellow might be able to tell us what Teufel and Miller were up to, where Miller went. Well, I'll certainly do all I can, Sheriff, but... Doctor, Dr. Bruce. Ready for me, Snyder? No, sir, please come here, sir. Something happened, I can't understand it. What's the trouble? His skin, I can't puncture it. What? Yes, sir, I broke two needles. His skin is impenetrable. Well, what's that mean, Doc? I'll have to see. Hey, you can come in, Sheriff. I remember reading of a case of a man struck by lightning. Never mind, Snyder. Get an injection needle, please. Yes, sir. Yeah. Looks dead to me, Doc. You're still alive. Here, here you are, sir. Thanks. Step back, please, Sheriff. Now, swab his arm, Snyder. Yes, sir. Yeah, that'll do now, let's see about this. Good heavens. Huh. Needle broke. You see, sir, it's, it's amazing, but I once read Never about it. Never mind about your eating, Snyder. Get me a scalpel. Yes, sir. Hey, listen, Doc. Get hey, back, what? please, hey. Sheriff. Well, okay, I just wanted to know. Here you are, sir. Now, let me see. Wait. Great heavens, you're right, Snyder. This man's skin is impenetrable. I told you, sir. The lightning must have petrified his skin. I, I read of a case like that. I'm... So have I, but I never believed it. Well, what goes on, Doc? Well, something occurred, perhaps the lightning, as Snyder suggests, which has made this man's skin impenetrable. That means, unfortunately... Yeah? What does it mean? It means we can't give him blood plasma. We can't do anything for this poor chap now. He's doomed. Superman doomed. And strangely enough, by one of his own superhuman powers. And while he lies helpless, given up for lost, his deadly foe, the Atom Man, has arrived in Metropolis. We'll return in a moment for the startling climax of today's episode. But first, here again is your announcer. You know, gang, these new comic buttons that Kellogg's Pep is putting out are so easy to get that, well, your collection must really be growing. For instance, have you got the Superman button yet? Boy, doesn't he look real with his bright red cape and Superman insignia? And how about Uncle Walt from Gasoline Alley? He has that cowlick, you know, the tuft of hair that's always sticking up straight. And Moon Mullins in his big black cigar. And uh, Harold Teen with his bow tie. Believe me, every single one of these 18 comic strip characters looks just as real as in the funny papers. Full comic strip colors, too, on a white enameled metal button that's a real eye-catcher. Gee, it's fun collecting all 18 different buttons trading duplicates with your friends and, and wearing all your buttons pinned on your jacket or dress or cap. And these buttons are easy to get. Sure, you don't send in a single penny, not even a box stop. Fact is, you can't buy these bright colored buttons anywhere. You just ask mom to get plenty of that super delicious whole wheat flake cereal, Kellogg's Pet. Then, look inside the package and see which prize you find. One of these sharp looking new comic buttons or a military insignia or a warplane button. It's your prize from P.E.P. Pep, made by Kellogg's of Battle Creek. Now back to the adventures of Superman. As Superman was brought to the Linwood Hospital, Henry Miller, the Nazi atom man who had defeated and left him for dead, arrived in Metropolis. Now, just before 11 o'clock at night, his hat pulled low over his face and his coat collar muffling his chin, he is riding an express elevator to the observation tower of the Metropolis Bank Building, the highest point in the city. 105 lofty stories above the street. Except for the atom man and the uniformed operator, the elevator is empty. You won't get much for your 50 cents tonight, mister. The tower closes in five minutes at 11 o'clock. Five minutes will be enough for my purposes. Hey, you can't really get the view in that short time, uh, from all sides of the tower, that is. Besides, it's pretty cloudy tonight. <laughs> I don't mind clouds. Okay, mister, it's up to you. Here we are. Ah, it looks like you got the whole place to yourself. That's okay. I won't be lonesome. I'll be up for you in five minutes when the tower closes. Fine. That's all the time I'll need. I don't get it, but okay. Walking out the deserted observation tower, 105 stories above the street, Henry Miller casts a quick look around him, makes certain he is alone, then reaches into his pocket and withdraws his meshed metal gloves and electronic throat converter. 
Quickly, he straps the converter to his throat, tight against his jugular vein, then pulls on his metal glove. Now he is the deadly atom man. He stops at the chest-high brick wall which surrounds the tower, peering down through the cloudy night at the broken pattern of lights and darkness below him, where the citizens of Metropolis work and sleep peacefully, unaware of the destruction threatening them. <laughs> First Metropolis, then the rest of the world. I will leave only this building standing. The rest I will turn to less than dust. For a moment longer, the Atom Man looks down on the great city beneath him. Then his right hand moves to the switch on the converter at his throat. The switch that will send the impulse to the kryptonite atoms in his blood and force them surging in a terrible stream of atomic power through his metal gloved fingers. What can save Metropolis now? Jimmy Olsen, Perry White, Lois Lane, and all the other innocent millions. Superman lies scarcely breathing in a hospital 50 miles away. Never was a moment more tense. So don't miss tomorrow's thrilling episode, fellows and girls. Something happens. Something you can't possibly guess. Tune in, same time, same station, for a thrill a minute in the adventures of Superman. Faster than a speeding bullet. More powerful than a locomotive. Able to leap tall buildings at a single bound. Look, up in the sky. It's a bird. It's a plane. It's Superman. Fellows and girls, be sure to follow the adventures of Superman. Brought to you every day, Monday through Friday. Same time, same station, by the grand old Kellogg Company of Battle Creek. And for other thrilling adventures of Superman, see your local newspaper. Superman is also a copyrighted feature, appearing in Superman DC Publications. What's the good word, gang? It's Kellogg. Kellogg's Raisin 40% Brand Flakes. The happy combination of fruit and cereal that makes breakfast loads of fun. Crisper, toasty, fresh flakes. Delicious. Fine, ripened, honey sweet raisins. Delicious. Flakes and raisins teamed up together. Doubly delicious. And those seedless raisins are so naturally sweet, you can go easy on Mom's precious supply of sugar. Kellogg packs a lot of nutrition in this double feature treat, too. Ask Mom for Kellogg's Raisin 40% Bran Flakes. And be sure to be with us tomorrow for the adventure.